Kendrick is back. I think it's been actually, you know what? I think it's been two weeks since we've recorded. Have because it? because the week before I had the family stuff. Oh yeah. So that's it actually has been long. Oh my god. I was like, I just like realized forever. that. That's why we haven't talked about all this shit. Oh my god. Well, there Hi. we go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Thank you. How was the B day? Oh my God. I'm still celebrating, first of all. Of and course. It's a Houston. month. It's a month. Yeah. It's a, it's a whole thing. You know, it's Virgos. <laughs> so I go to Houston next month to see Beyonce. I mean, I'm sorry, next weekend. Next to see weekend. Beyonce. Yeah. So that'll be amazing. Now, did you I, pick it's, it's the Houston fun. show because that's her hometown and you think she's going to show out? Okay. So we had a few cities. That we like, you know, you had to like, it was a whole thing getting tickets. Like you had to like sign up for certain cities to like get notified when they were going on presale. Like it was a whole, like oh. a whole kid and caboodle. Like, so I, I, my dream was to go, I still want to go to Vancouver to see her. Like I want to go out of the country to like see Beyonce. Like I, I should go like overseas, but like th- that's out of the country enough. That's okay. So like, I want to go like to Canada or somewhere just like to see her outside the States. So I did Vancouver. I had a cousin. Uh, one of them, I think did a safe and did like Nashville and then another one. Cause it's like, you know, three hours from us. And then the other one did Houston both days. And so Vancouver, oh my God, we were out of town actually when the tickets went on like presale it was a whole thing. We were arguing, <laughs> like people like it, it was no, it was it was bad. Like we were in the middle of like the fucking Green Hills Mall in Nashville, which is like a nice ass mall, like arguing about Beyonce tickets. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I don't care anymore. I'll go by myself. Like I'm yelling. I'm like, I get out of there. I'm like, I'm never I'm never talking to y'all again. And then like three minutes later we decided to go to Houston because she's like, This is okay, she's gonna show out there, it's gonna be fun. And now Yeah, think- Houston, she will. I think Megan Thee Stallion's gonna come. I got a feeling. <gasps> Shut up. I got a feeling. I just feel and do it. I don't know. And do Savage? I think so. Maybe a couple songs. Ooh, I don't I know. I got chills. Something. Ooh. Ooh. Because oh. I, I don't think they'll, I, I will never get sick of Savage. I will never. No. I listen to it at least once a day. It's all of my alarms are set to play that song. Yes. <laughs> love that. <laughs> I love Megan and I love Beyonce. I love. Uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I decided to just forego it. I know. It was a tough decision. It was really hard because I was about to just, I was about to go by myself because my people mm-hmm. who would love Beyonce in my world had either already gone to another city or yeah. they were like, I can't afford it. But I've heard, I was hearing all sorts of stories about people getting really cheap tickets, uh, really cheap tickets like last minute. Um, That's and then like I was the like, trip. should I, so like, yeah, like right, like mm-hmm. an hour or two before. But that is yeah. risky. That is. A, it is. And you can do that with like any artist because they're like mm-hmm. all these like apps now where like you can get on there like an hour before the concert and that's when people are like trying to ditch all the high tickets that they bought. So they're selling them for like dirt cheap. But like Beyonce is a hard one to do it for because I think they're going to hold out. But I've heard about some people like looking up. Yeah, I saw a, a lot of people. did a whole Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was like, I got it last minute. And I'm just not one of those much. people. I know. I don't, I don't seem to have that luck where it's like. I don't, maybe it's because I don't have enough faith that it'll work. So I go into it like, right. oh, this isn't going to work. It's, I just, I, I'll just pay, to, I'll just pay high price to uh-huh. have it planned months and months ahead of time. Exactly. That's how it is. That's yeah. how it is. But Pia went and Pia said it was life changing. Everyone uh, who's gone says it's life changing. Yes. People have been like thinking about going to other cities to see yes. it again. Yes. I'm so excited. Yes. I'm a, you know, my family, we're, we're like a Who are you going with? All my cousins. Okay. So it's like, so uh, like six of us are going out of town, but like only four of us are actually going to the concert. So it's going to oh, okay. be, and funny, I don't know if I told you, but my little cousin, so uh, my cousin that's going, that's not going to the concert, she has a daughter who's like obsessed with Beyonce now. We got her a ticket to go. Oh. So she's going to see her for the first time. And she- Oh my God. And what a excited, show to I see. I know. She's so excited. You know, this is not Destiny's Child, Beyonce. This is like Mother Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Like literal Queen Beyonce. Mm -hmm. (sighs) All the clips from it. I just, I can't. I'm excited. I'm just watching her. I'm like, how is she doing this over and over and over again? I know. I'm I'm excited. We 
we always have you seen her live before Mm, yes, I saw her at one of those like concerts where a bunch of different people perform. So it wasn't just oh, a okay. Beyonce concert. Oh, you caught her early days. I guess I did. Yeah, exactly. Mm. This was like, like I think it was like a Kiss FM, whatever the hell. Oh, like, okay. So, yeah. so like, I don't even count it. It's close enough. It's okay. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> you need the the next one though. I'll fly out there and I will go with you. Like we're gonna oh. we're gonna make it a thing. Hold me to it. Should we I just go. go to Houston? I'll just join you. I'll just join you in the Houston Ooh, show. We can pick a city. That'd be fun. Let's pick a city. We'll right. We'll go see Beyonce and whatever. City. Like we'll. I don't know. Well, what's another fun city to go to? I don't know. <laughs> New York, man. Well, I don't. I don't know. No, New York's too high maintenance. I don't know. New we'll York's go, so we'll expensive. You can't just like go yeah. to. It's like New York. You got to spend. Thousands of dollars to get a nice hotel. Well, I thought you don't have to worry about that because you got the hook up. We got the hook up. Mm-hmm. So we'll figure that's, it out. We'll- that's a big thing. Having that mm-hmm. hook up, that changes the game for traveling. Yes. No wonder you like to travel so much. Exactly. I'm You're excited. like, because uh, <laughs> Okay, well, now we have a lot to cover. Yes. I hope you are prepared. I'm ready. I only got to listen to like five seconds of your episode and then I was like, fuck, I forgot to take notes on something else. So I, oh, I really yeah. suggest everyone listen to Kendrick's episode on his podcast because he already got, you got, like you watch it and then record. So you have like that yeah. fresh, that fresh anger. It's I don't that- like to do it all the time because normally if I have a guest on that week, oh. I'll just talk about it with them. But if I do solo, I'm like, I'll wait until you'll, and then mm-hmm. I'll stay up and record and edit and then I'll switch over to Jocelyn's Cabaret and let them energize me. Oh, again, God. So okay. <laughs> 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 it's okay. <laughs> so I told everyone that we would cover, not in detail, but go over some of the big points of the Roni episodes that we didn't cover. And then mm-hmm. we'll touch on this past this last night's episode, and then, then we'll go into Atlanta, Before because I, like that was a lot. What? 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 It was. Before we um get into it, I, this is so random, but just for the people that are watching, not listening, I'm one. Are you one of those people too? Like I always, I never drink like one thing. Like if I'm, like I have water here, which you know I only really drink water, but like I have a beer, so like I never just have beer with me. I always have beer and water, so like I always alternate between the two when we're recording. And I never know if you notice when I'm. I doing do the two. So oh, okay, I I'm do. Like, it's so weird, and I feel like people don't know what the hell's going on. But yes, I just I'm always I never drink like one thing. It's always got to be with something else. I'm like, kind of the same way. Like water, you know, I, water I do all day by itself, but anything else, I'm like, give me a water, please, too. I need always, that. always, yeah. always. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. The the thing from episode seven that I, that was big were Jessel talking to her mom about her IVF journey. Yes. Which I thought was wonderful. I thought that great combo was was just a beautiful little insight into not only their relationship but also into Jessel, right? Mm-hmm. But the big thing was uh, Bryn had that wreath making party. Where yes. Cy immediately shows up and complains about the food not being healthy <laughs> enough. And then she acts like she like Cy, I really am trying. I'm trying to like enjoy it, but she <laughs> just complains and is bitchy all the time that I'm like, I need you to have a little softness at some point. Yeah. I'm I on my new episode, uh I a portion of it was an, an ask me anything kind of portion of it. And somebody asked me, How do you feel about Sai and her food? Like, do you feel like it's complaining oh, the food because I'm over is it? Accurate. I I know. I'm like, I'm here for it actually. <laughs> like, cause that's kind of me. I'm like, if I especially like someone with like a dietary restriction, I feel like you gotta kinda always be thinking about food. So like she is always What's her dietary restriction? Well she she doesn't eat meat. Oh, that's right. She's a pescatarian? Mm-hmm something oh. <laughs> don't, don't give me the yeah. line i don't know yeah yeah, she's yeah something but i don't know she says she doesn't eat like maybe she doesn't eat pork and be i don't know maybe it was something like that she didn't eat the pigs in a blanket that's what our main remember but i don't know but i feel like food is always top of mind with me if i'm going somewhere i'm like okay do i need to eat before or, they, or am I okay to eat when I get there? Because, like, I don't... I'm sorry, but, like, I know people love, like, a charcuterie board. Me too. It's cute, but, like... That's not a don't, meal. That's not dinner. Right. That's not dinner. I'm sorry. No. The whole do location that. for the wreath-making event, like, the, it was not a glamorous event. Like, yeah. Like, there... I know I've seen really, really glam 
arts and craftsy type of parties. This was not one of them. Mm-hmm. Even like this, even the bar that the food was set up on was like, what exactly is this venue? Is it open yeah. for other people? Like, what do people come in and purchase? Is it just a craft store? It was a little bit absurd, the location. Um, you know, it felt like when, like, if the gang from Cheers, like, closed down for a day to, <laughs> to like, do some internal friend stuff, and then they'll open back up to the public, like, later on. Exactly. Like, like this like. is not what this is normally used for. And yes. It's, like, Bryn's friend who owns mm-hmm. this shop, and she's, like, probably goes in there all the time or something. Yep. Although even Bryn seemed like she didn't know what she was doing. Even Bryn was like, I don't know. I'm just, I just need, we needed an event. They needed an exactly. event for production. Okay. We needed a scene. That's it. Um. Sai is, she tells them the story of Jenna, Jenna, genitalia, and Mm -hmm. Jenna's like all very weird about it, which I don't know why I thought that was kind of odd of Jenna, because Mm. I guess I wouldn't have thought it was, like, it wasn't a conversation that was done, like, in confidence, because you were filming it, so, like, as much as I want to jump on not liking Sai... I don't. Th- I was kind of more weirded out. Like, why did did you expect her not? Did you was that like a sworn to secrecy situation, Jenna? Right, and there were like multiple people there when you told the story, so yeah. like, it didn't come across as secret. So yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't get know. I didn't get that one, but I do love how disgusted Jessel was <laughs> with her name. Be- Your name was Judith. <laughs> Love. Disgusted. Love. Just because like, why is her oh. name? <laughs> and it, wait, it was Judith. Agar, Agar, and whatever mm. her last name was, because her middle name was uh, Agar or something. I'm like, oh. who did that? Well, I guess. Where did Lyons sense. come from? I, Jenna Lyons Mazo. I think that's her real last name. No, oh. I made that up too. I don't know. <laughs> it is very well, I confusing. Well, believed it, so there we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but then Aaron, she comes in with all the energy, and her confessional is, I want to ruin her party like she ruined mine. I'm sorry. I loved it. That is exact. That is the exact energy I would come That's in with. Like Kendrick bitch. would do. Yeah, absolutely. Like you ruined my fucking birthday. Mm. I will make sure you never have another good one. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait to come. Invite me every year, please, so I can actively ruin your birthday. Thanks. So it's pretty clear that Aaron um, doesn't view food as super vital because in her confessional, because she gets into it with Sai and Sai's just like, mm. I was hungry, and Aaron goes. In her confessional, Sai should get that looked at because my kids get in bad moods when they're hungry. Like, you're 40. Eat. I felt like that was an attack on me. <laughs> like, what? Like, are you kidding me? I was like, Excuse that's, me? that. I felt like I was offended personally by that statement. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'll eat. But if you're going to throw a party between the hours of like five and I'll give you till seven. Then mm-hmm. you only need to concern yourself maybe with not all the food. Fine. You're right. Even though I prefer you do. Okay. Okay. But it's fine if you don't. But it seemed like this party was going on for a while and it seemed like it was in prime, maybe 7 p.m. territory. Mm-hmm. I'm not 100% sure. It just felt like that. Right. The speech is, if I also had to, if I had a vow renewal and people were given speech after speech after speech, I would be like, look, I don't blame people for getting bored. They don't know us. They don't know these inside jokes. Uh I would be very understanding. I would be like, that's fine. you. You know, it's just, it's always because like, it's a housewife's thing. You have to be offended if someone doesn't love your party as much as they were supposed to. Right. Another thing that's very clear is Aaron is super controlling and needs a lot yes. of it needs a lot of attention. Like if she, she wanted this to be the most special night they'd ever gone to. And it was just so beautiful. And oh my god, your marriage is everything. And that's why she shushed people in the middle of her vows. That's just not what's going to happen if these people don't know you like that. You know, the other people giving speeches. It's just not going to be that. First of all, this was a very season one housewives party because you didn't (laughs) think about any of the logistics like to go into this. Like no one cares about the speeches. This was a very (laughs) season one housewife party. (laughs) Like God, like I can't imagine you thinking that enough people, not even forget the people at the the party actually, us at home to think that we would care about what your cousin Monica has to say about what you were doing in high school. No one cares. 
get to where, where I, I care more about what was on the menu because that seemed to be what's upset everybody. Let me see the pigs in a blanket. Prove <laughs> to me you have more food to serve people. That's yes. what I wanted to know. I don't care about the speeches and none of that. Your sister, she could have got it too. It's mm-hmm. quiet as it's kept. Like, no, Ooh. not doing that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. So they finish that little thing up with Cy, but then she moves over to Aaron or Bryn. And it's like you made these. Now Abe was being messy when he brought that messy up. Messy Ar- boobs. Oh, he was like totally laugh. He might look. We do kind of laugh uncomfortably when we're uncomfortable. That's a thing for sure. Like yeah. he didn't seem like he was th- thinking it was hilarious. It's not like he was adding on to the joke or anything. He was just like, mm-hmm. okay, all right, okay. But the way he presented it made it seem like these were really statements that Bryn was making like from the gut like yeah right you need to you're not really married because you didn't say she was clearly kidding it's Bryn right you know everyone collectively understands that so you don't give Aaron information like that without knowing she's gonna lose her mind he's married to her he knows how she is like are you I couldn't imagine Giving her that ammunition and not expecting her to go back and cause an absolute (laughs) scene the next time she saw these women. And okay, I want your thoughts because if that was you. Who am I? I'm Aaron? You're Aaron in the situation. Okay, I love this. Okay, You've now gone back and you've talked to Bran and Jessel's jumped in and said, no, she's never said this. So now there's two people against your husband. Who are you believing in the situation? Are you thinking it was as amped up as your husband's is saying? Or are you thinking that now that we have someone who's completely objective, who, you know, outside the situation, Jessel, saying, no, 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 she never said that word, even though she did say divorce. But she never said that word. I love how sure, sure, right? She, I swear, you guys, she did not once say divorce. And said it like nine times. Insert divorce, 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 divorce. Yes. (laughs) That's a tough one because I wouldn't be offended by it like number the first one place. so it's tough right. for me to put myself in that position and also Aaron doesn't like Jessel so mm. then she's like well, I'm not definitely gonna listen to her so it's like she was just going that's true she just likes to be mad she likes to be mad hash it out get an apology and then move on she needs to and hear I think Cy said that like before they started like before the season started Aaron I think she said Aaron is just the girl that likes to be mad like, I, was, about I think anything, that might have been so. Bryn Oh, was it? One of the two, but they said like, yeah. I, or it might have been Cyber, like the common denominator, she's like, she had a problem with me, and, uh, uh, mm-hmm. and it's still going. Always. Always. Um, I didn't like those Cy goes, I'm sitting across from a bunch of Grinches. I'm like, girl, you are the biggest Grinch of all, so you <laughs> don't get to make that statement. Um, no. But here's Erin, she's so, ser- who says divorce at, an, at, a, at a vow renewal or whatever the fuck it was? I'm like, that's not... I didn't know there were words you weren't supposed to say. Like, that's... Right. She... Do you hear yourself? But of course she doesn't. And so Bryn finally puts her foot down and does the, like, if you accuse me of flirting with a married man, we're going to have a bad time. This is not going to go well. And then she says, I think this is savagely amazing. It was a joke. Don't flatter yourself. The party was fucking boring. Oops. (laughs) Oops. <laughs> I loved it. I and I, I don't blame Aaron for being like, okay, I'm leaving. I'm like, actually, that's kind of fair. Like that was a <laughs> rage. <laughs> that's kind I of can admit, thing to say. I, I'm the person if I've spent see, mm. I told you once before on this very podcast, I said <laughs> this is why every time my birthday comes around, I'm like, oh my God, I think I want to do a sit down dinner at a nice restaurant. I want to pay for everyone to eat. And then I'm, I'm a Virgo. I start thinking about it too much. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't want to pay for them. To, like, why am I, No, I'm not paying for you. I don't even like you that much. I'm not paying for you to eat. <laughs> See, this is what, if I spent that much money like Aaron did on a party, and the first thing you say to me when you're mad is that it was boring, I am going to be so pissed off for the rest of the time you know me oh yeah just because i spent my money on that damn party are that you kidding me that is too far too far too far Ugh. unforgivable yes <laughs> but aaron then calls her sister kelly listen kelly i don't like stay you. out of it yeah we're not kelly like your fans attitude i don't like how bitchy you and aaron are together it's like she goes <laughs> i told you she's fucking rude and she wore sunglasses like you're not a celebrity relax that's how she talks it's fairly like Ugh, guys be quiet right <laughs> shut up only celebrities can wear sunglasses i have some right here okay yeah be quiet okay 
to quote the ancient African proverb, I said what I said. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane, and it is perfect timing because fall is on its way, and you better believe my wardrobe could use some updated classic Jenny Kane pieces. Jenny Kane is such a California brand through and through, and their staples make getting dressed so much easier because you can mix and match. You think minimalist and effortless, but totally refined with still a nice luxurious quality to it. Because sometimes minimalist, you can think boring, but it's not. They've got luxurious cashmere sweaters, iconic accessories, anything you need to elevate your everyday basics, but elevate is what we're doing. We elevate with Jenny Kane. Not to mention they have incredible home essentials too. Jenny Kane is here to help you live your best season yet. And for a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use the code she speaks to get 15% off. I just recently picked up these fabulous sandals, slip-on sandals. Well made, of course, everything Jenny Kane has is perfectly made, but I love this little knot detail. Again, it's a classic, but elevated. See? In any season, but especially this one, their sweaters are the thing you gotta have. I'm obsessed with the Flynn cashmere sweater. It's just the perfect everyday v-neck. And the cashmere Francis Polo is such a cool vintage inspired staple. And they're back in new shades and you can bet I'm adding both of them to my cart. Jenny Kane is known for their super luxe yet lightweight sweaters. So, and trust us, they do cashmere best better than anyone. The Cashmere Fisherman and Cashmere Cocoon are best sellers in every season, but I'm always most excited to style them when it's fall, right? Plus everything in their collection is designed so intentionally that you can style pieces together without a second thought. I love to pair a Jenny Kane sweater and everything from classic denim to a simple slip dress for a look that's just effortless. It's chic. It's put together, you know? Jenny Kane believes in the art of simplicity. They focus on comfort, quality, timeless design. You can curate your whole wardrobe that just never goes out of style with Jenny Kane. And did I mention the home essentials, you guys? Timeless furniture pieces, cozy throws, perfectly curated decor, and the most incredible candles. I keep one in every room. Plus, they have a great rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase. And joining is free. So find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 50 15% off your first order when you use code she speaks at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J E N N I K A Y N E dot com. Promo code she speaks. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. God. Okay, now I need to get your thoughts on the Jenna gift situation because. Okay. Bren and Sai are so convinced that Jen is only doing this as like a marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. But to, I'm reading it like Sai is like, it's like an influencer off type of thing. Like either she's kind of mm. jealous she didn't think about it at first or something, or she just assumes that anyone who hands her something is expecting a post. So I, I don't think that's, yeah. what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Okay. I actually, surprisingly, because you didn't tell me you were going to talk about this. I actually thought about this very topic today when I was watching the new episode. Mm. And to me, so one, that makes a lot of sense. I think, you know how every now and then it's so good to like, well, me, I'm always in a situation like a lot when I come here because like I don't have to prepare anything to come here. I just watch the shit. I get to come here and like I play off of you. You have your notes, all like that. So it's like fun to do. Sometimes when you are like a creator, shit isn't fun. Like when you have to watch the shows, like when we're talking about me watching the stuff like that night and then recording about Mm -hmm. it, I can't enjoy it. Like I didn't get to really enjoy that Atlanta reunion until the next day when I got to watch it without doing notes, without thinking about content, without just watching it and enjoying Ralph's facial expressions, (laughs) Drew looking dead at him singing, Andy not knowing what the hell is going on, like Candy bobbing her head. I couldn't (laughs) truly enjoy that last night (laughs) until I started watching it today because I was doing stuff. So I have to imagine it's the same with her. Like sometimes a gift can't just be a gift because I'm wondering like, okay, is there ulterior motive? Am I supposed to post this? Do I need a link? Do I do this? Oh, do I need a discount code and all this kind of stuff? So I 
I'll give her that. I can I can see how that might be. The way I was thinking about it today, though, I actually think Sai and like Sai and the other girls, and then you have Jenna over here. I actually think the two groups have entirely different love languages. And I think uh. that Jenna doesn't necessarily like the physical aspect of stuff. So she's very much, cause she, she comes across very introverted and very, you know, she, totally. she's very kind of different than the other girls. Like the other ones all kind of give me more extroverted vibes, but like, I feels like Jenna loves to give gifts and that's her way of saying, I might not show it, but I really do like you as a person. So let me give you a gift so you know that I'm being affectionate. The other girls are like, no, I want your time. I want this. I want that. So it seems like it's just like a rapid, like if they can just stop and actually talk about it, they can get on the same page. But I think Cy and Brynn are always like way too hyped up to actually see where Jenna's coming from a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And so they're not interested in doing it. So I think it's really a difference of like different love languages. Different. Yeah, between totally. All of them. I do love Jessel in this scene. She's like, go, she's like, oh, thank you, thank you. And Jenna goes, uh, this is to make up for the lingerie. And in her, <laughs> and in Jessel's confessional, she's like, I'm on a thank you tour now. Thank you so much. I love it. <laughs> this is what Jessel ends up saying in scene. She goes, this is a great re gift bag. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rewind it. I'm like, she said, re she, I'm like, was she referring to it? Like, I will re-gift this? Or was this like, a g I, I love it. Right. I'll take so, the content out. And so then. clueless. I don't think it even, like how they make a big deal that Jenna, um, oh, I guess we'll get into that because that's in the next episode. Okay. So that mm. was that. Next episode is all about the business class coach situation. Okay. Okay. And it starts with Aaron. Yes, I didn't as soon as soon as Aaron walked in with that soup, I'm like, I don't trust this. I know. <laughs> this is not about the soup. This is about First of all, something what kind of else. Soup was it? I need to know what down? kind of soup. I did not. I did not. I did not. It was something that like I don't order in restaurants. Mm -hmm. I knew that much. I was like, no. If you want to like come to my home and give me a soup, like you have a couple of options. You have, of course, number one, give me a potato soup. I love a potato Ooh. soup. Give me something hearty, like a a a, a, a beef. You know, something with beef in it, like mm -hmm. a, a or you know maybe do both, like a good zupa from Olive Garden. Something like that Ooh, you know olive garden a, a nice chicken tortilla like that'll do but i don't know what she came in and when she said it i was like oh <laughs> like no that's not a guess an inconvenience at this point like no keep your nasty ass soup and get out of my house you just throw it at the wall get out <laughs> <laughs> i don't want this i want your nasty soup um but aaron is only there to get her side of the whole Bryn thing out because she's coming off of storming out of the wreath making thing. And like, uh -huh. clearly no one really reached out to her <laughs> after, <Right? laughs> after she left to check on her because Jenna's like, I actually didn't even realize you were that upset to be honest. I'm like, really? She goes, I thought you just like needed a moment. I'm like, okay, I'll go with it. I don't know if that was just her conveniently being like, I am not in it. Like, I don't want to Needed a moment involved. and like literally left the party, never got came back. and went home. Yeah. <laughs> needed a moment, never came back. It's fine. Um, but Jenna, she tries. She tries. She's like, look, Bryn's flirty. You know, it, it hurts someone's feelings. Like, it, and then it hurts someone's feelings. I think she was trying to be like, yeah, okay, maybe she should say sorry. Mm -hmm. But Aaron goes, it's just one thing after another with her <laughs> after talking about divorce i just can't i can't with her mm -hmm. it's so it's so over the top it's just dramatic and then to be messy because she's not getting the response she wants from jenna she's like well did you hear that she was actually mad at you because you're going down early i'm like the only reason you brought <laughs> that up was because you're not getting Jen jenna's not mad enough on your behalf so now you're like right you know bryn doesn't even like you either Mm -hmm. That's what you did. That's all you, you did. You got to rally the troops at that point. Yep. That's exactly what she did. Uh huh. And so at first, Jenna explains why she's going down there. She's like, I have the skin disorder. I hate what I look like in a bathing suit. I just would like to get a tan. And like, if this is her source of total insecurity, like we later see in this past episode that she doesn't even go in water. Like she's Yeah, she had a crew neck at breakfast. Exactly. She's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So Aaron hears that, but you could tell even Aaron's like, I'm not buying that. Like you could tell, if someone said, if Jenna Lyons said that to me, it'd be like, oh my God, tell right. me all <laughs> about your traumatizing story stories from childhood because mm -hmm. I'm sure you have like because like that seems like a really deep thing she said she's got an ice pack on her mouth because of some teeth situation from this yeah. disorder so like 
She's not making it up. Right. But then Jenna fucks up and thinks she's being funny. But this mm-hmm. is Aaron. Aaron doesn't know how to take a joke. No, not at so, all. So when if I had heard that, I'd be like, bitch, I don't blame you. Yeah, get on okay. a Okay, book Please. me one too, bitch. The fuck? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But instead, Aaron is like, they, they, it's, it, this is about filming shit it's about filming logistics it always Uh is when it comes to this stuff it's like how come you don't have to go do the whole group thing and be on the plane with us and blah 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 Uh that's all it's about yep it's like how come they clearly could have gone down though they clearly right who else who wants to join jenna right maybe because they didn't know is that what they're mad about that they didn't know that she's I guess. And they think that she's being sneaky and they feel like she thinks she's above them. And I'm like, I just, I don't get the read that Jenna is like, I'm better than you. I just get that she's kind of socially awkward. Yeah. And they're like reading it a different way. But then Aaron goes, are you flying back with us? And Jenna goes, I don't know. And now then I was like, (laughs) okay, Jenna. (laughs) I'm, I'm so like, so I just kind of went on, you know, when I actually, when I came to LA, I was with three friends and I will say the fun of like the group trips oh, is yeah. like traveling the together. The travel, so, it's the plane. It's every, right. It's all of that. Like if I didn't, you know, that was the first and only time I ever flew Spirit because they bought their tickets before me and I was like, God damn, okay, solidarity. Yeah. Let me buy a fucking Spirit Airlines ticket. So I bought a ticket and never again. Never we were again. stranded for like eight hours. So that's beside the point. I won't go down that rabbit hole again. But we, uh, like, if I didn't have that group of people there with me for like that experience, that could have been a much worse day than it was. It actually turned out to like, we laughed a lot that uh-huh. day. So like, the travel is a part of the fun, but I'm not going to knock somebody else that wants to like, do their own thing like do it that's fine like i'll, your I'll vacation. be okay right that's okay it's weird yep. yep it's so weird another thing that happened in this second to last episode was the jessel and pavit vietnam conversation yeah okay so someone told me i needed to listen to noor's podcast because i guess she got into like the dynamics more on the on noor's podcast oh. is called the reality is so if you guys want to check that hey, out boo. Um, go check that out. Uh, but she is Indian, so she could speak a lot to like the the culture of what's happening between the two of them. Mm-hmm. It felt to me, at least, like he was like, "Well, you get to go to Anguilla with your friends, so I'm gonna go. I can go to Vietnam too, huh?" Like it was very like very bratty <laughs> like that. But the dialogue in this scene is hysterical. Yeah. Okay, she's like they there are, are a very th- unserious couple, and I kind of love that about exactly. Them. <laughs> which is why like it's funny that this is gonna this was kind of made up to be the couple that had like the issues. Mm-hmm. But the more I see them, the more I'm like, this is just them. Like they yes, they're like total besties. I'm sure they've got intimacy issues, but you know what? Women can relate to that. It's not like that doesn't mm-hmm. happen. Um, but she goes, there's thousands of hotels. I'll book you a room. He goes, I want a good banh mi sandwich. She goes, I'll get you a sandwich. And he's like, no, not, not as good as Vietnam. And then he goes, so why are you going to Anguilla? She goes, she wanted to say, because that's my job. Because bitch, we're filming I'm working, a right. show. But she has to say, to hang out with my girlfriends. And then she goes, so what? You're going to Vietnam to hang out with the sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> she said that with full sincerity. Like she meant it <laughs> completely. <laughs> it's you know what? The London accent sometimes yes. really kind of makes it when she because you don't know sometimes whether she's trying to crack a joke or be like dead ass serious. And the accent really helps her like kind of walk a fine line between the two. And that's why everything is so funny when she does oh, it. Oh my god, take it with a sandwich. <laughs> he is he is being stupid though. He's going for only three days. It's a 20 hour flight. So he's going to be there less than he's going to be traveling. Why would why why would you even do that to yourself? So you just want, but he goes, the plane sounds great. I just want to be on the flight. <laughs> hey, look, if he's flying first class, maybe it is. Maybe it's a nice. It's got to be one of those planes mm-hmm. like where you it, like lay, lay fully down. out. Yeah. With the pillows. And yeah. Then uh-huh. in that situation. Okay, fine. Because okay, he's got the on, twins, fine. you know, he's right. like, that sounds fantastic. Mm-hmm. Someone coming over. Do you want a little champagne? Yes. <laughs> Lights out. Goodbye. Best sleep of my life. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> The other one that happened in this one is that Aaron really, really shows her ass where in the group, she'll be like, 
oh, God, Jenna. Yeah, I guess she, I get, to her face at least, like, oh, we just wish you were here. And then in her confessional, she'll be like, actions have consequences, Jenna. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, you see, now I really don't like that. <laughs> she, yes. I don't, very, she's one of those people that goes along with like the group think mentality yeah. when it's a group around. So she's like, how can I bond with these people? Oh, they all kind of hate Jenna right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Let me hate Jenna too. There we go. Mm -hmm. I'll fit right in. But then Every to time. Jenna's face, she's a lot sweet. She's like, I, cause mm -hmm. she really fancies herself. She said this in like episode one when they all go to the ham or the, the yeah, the Hamptons. She mm -hmm. says that she knows Jenna really well. She just wants the other woman to know Jenna really well. Like, I know Jenna. I'm like, okay, I get it. You're, like, claiming Jenna as, like, that's why you brought her the soup to really establish that you're the friend of Jenna. Right. Okay. But then behind her back, <laughs> she can't wait. Because she really leaves out what Jenna said about feeling insecure about her body. She, like, omits all of that. <laughs> And first starts with she's not flying down because she doesn't want to fly coach, which you she knew that was going to get them all pissed off and, right. con and confused. Like, what? Like, that's a weird thing to say. But then she goes, <laughs> and then something about, like, not being able to tan and, uh, like. <laughs> like, very after after the fact. Like, it wasn't even mentioned like at that. all. Like, like she, oh. mm -mm, mm -mm, incorrect. Mm -hmm. I will say, the food spread that Sai had out was the exact type of food spread she should have had out, considering all the complaining that she's done. So, well done. <laughs> Literally, I was gonna say if that food spread hadn't have been like aces across the board, it would have been like you would have heard about it for the longest <laughs> from me, from you, from everybody. Because like, no, 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 you can't be a complainer and then not come through when it's your turn. But she actually came through, so I was like, okay, uh -huh. okay, it was respect, a solid respect. spread, solid. Mm -hmm. She she does understand. She says it in this episode that her idea of a vacation, eat maybe a little water activity, eat, mm -hmm. get ready, do whatever. Eat. Snack, <laughs> then dinner. I'm like, thank yes. you. I need at least the snack. You, I have to be constantly aware of the food around me so that mm -hmm. I could just be. It's a comfort to me. <laughs> I don't yes. ever want to feel like I'm hungry. This is also why I just love like an Atlanta trip. Because no matter who's planning it, the food is... All, they might miss on a lot of stuff. The food is always going to be good. Because those the Atlanta trip? girls love to eat. Yeah, I think you need to go back through your memory. Kenya's no, no, trip. Like, well, Kenya starves everyone. Like, Kenya's just a bad planner. But, like, think about, like, when they got to... Sonya, um, when they got to Jamaica. Yeah, was it Jamaica? Jamaica? Yeah, mm -hmm. Full spread. Like, this year Sonya, when they got to Sonya Charay's proved Hotel. She had to fix her mistake. Because she had that real bootleg party oh yeah with the with broken the thing that didn't booth and... work so she had and she came she came so correct that like candy forgot about it candy's like i ah, well done i got nothing right <laughs> yeah but like normally especially when, like when they're in atlanta like drew always calls us we don't know if she's gonna pay the chef but drew calls a oh, chef over to <laughs> to like make a whole spread remember when marlo had um marlo had a she, that her event she has her and food. charade mm -hmm. oh she always her yeah. and charade like had that like thing at her house where she was just, like i just want to love on you for something and something i want to honor you or something like that and had like the chef made like pans of pans and food for just those two when drew came over to help but then she kicked her out she's like you can't eat this get out of here oh yeah that's right <laughs> Yeah, it's no, I it's 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 hit or miss on the other shows, especially mm. Orange County. Orange County, they're notorious for not having enough food ever. Right. This past event with Heather had, I don't know what's going on with. Oh, remind me to bring up Heather when we talk about Atlanta too. weirdest connection. But I need to vent about that. OK, but that that event that Heather had, like when Emily, <laughs> what did she say? She's like, what is this? Is this a bird cage? And she like <laughs> when they opened that and I saw the food, I was like, see. You motherfuckers love to starve somebody. I'm not doing this with y'all. Caviar on leaves and all. I'm like, no. Can well, the we, problem like with Heather is that she, when you hear her order, it's always like, I'm going to have the so burger. Snooty. No bun. And I'm like, get oh. out of here. So her planning food activities is probably the worst idea because she's. Of all. Yeah. No. And then you wonder why Emily's hammered at your event <laughs> talking bad about you because you haven't given me anything to sop up this goddamn alcohol. I am very upset though that she said there was sand in the salad and everyone mm -hmm. uh, everyone concurred. Like Yes. Everyone yeah. agreed. And uh-uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
the see. you know like when you go to the beach and everyone has that that memory of like the snacks you brought and a little bit of sand in them and then you right. take a bite and you get a piece of dirt. oh it's the worst <laughs> exactly oh it's so <laughs> bad <laughs> so unforgivable but all Heather <laughs> wants you to do is compliment the entire event that's the all ambiance. she wants every yes. single I love this and by the way I thought. I said this already on my Orange County episode, but I was like, her being like, I thought that was a birdcage. Isn't some fucked up thing to say? Right. <laughs> it it's looks like, like a goddamn, I thought it was. Sorry, the, she didn't know. know what a cloche was. Jesus. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that word before I watched Orange <laughs> County, first of all. <laughs> like, shut up. God, I thought it was a thing from Beauty and the Beast, the damn, one That's, of the yeah, living the, 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 the rose <laughs> under it. Yes. <laughs> Like, God, <laughs> this is so fancy. Get out of here. <laughs> That's so good. Um, <sighs> okay, so Jenna's not there yet, but Bryn, Bryn starts the shit talking. Mm-hmm. And it's like, she's like, oh, she went on Instagram to show off the gifts that she gave us. <laughs> Here's Maybe I'm just too poor to understand why this is not <laughs> a gift. Because I'm like, I don't care if they're collabs you did. I'm sure that shit is actually expensive in real life. Right. I will take it. Happily. Me too. <laughs> and her showing the gift she gave, I don't know why that negates the gift, but I guess I don't know. It's a stretch for me. It's a. It's. I'm having a hard time understanding it. Other than you guys just seem jealous. Uh huh. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a social influencer. Yeah. Hoity toityness of it all. I don't know. But it's it's not me. I just love. I love free shit. So. Exactly. <laughs> Especially if Jenna, <laughs> and like, it's going to be fabulous. You know, it is. Right. And then they're, and then they keep prep and then they keep ending these moments with Jenna. Like, but keep the gifts coming. We love the gifts. I'm like, oh, right. no, you can stop the gifts, Jenna. These women do not deserve your gifts. Okay. Exactly. Send them to the fans. <laughs> How about that? And the fact that, uh, I know we didn't talk about it because we're, uh, like hitting the high notes, but like Jessel packing for this trip, she was like, Oh, you know what? I've lost a little weight. This lingerie isn't actually that bad. <laughs> it's like, okay, you talk so badly about this Jessel. lingerie and now you're bringing it. So <laughs> you better like make the best. You know what? You should have like, she should have like tied it in the back, put some heels on with it and wore that shit to dinner. Like an actual like lingerie dress. Like she should have, you should have really showed her like that you liked the dress. She really could have done more with it. She could have even yeah. turned it into like, if she had tied it, maybe turn it into like a top. But she, I don't know. I'm not a fashion mm-hmm. chi- chica, but <laughs> I think that could, she had a lot of potential there. It was, it it to be fair, the, a str- like a strange color choice. Yeah. Cause it is like a, it's almost a Christmas green. Yeah, yeah. But was it Christmas? Even still, you don't want to. You don't want a Christmas green. But I also feel like that Christmas green looks fantastic against Jessel's skin. Of course, that's why they did it. Absolutely, <laughs> right. that's why they so did I'm it. Like, mm, I don't know. May, I, I mean, I get it. Like, it, it it can appear to be a little frumpy yeah. looking when she first like. So I get it. But that's what a good like all she had to, is for. All she had to do was just not wear it and be like, I tried it on. I just don't want, I'm just embarrassed. I don't want to be in it. As opposed exactly. to like parading herself around. Like, look at this hideous thing. Exactly. Look at it. Isn't it awful? It's like, <laughs> take it down. What is this, honey? So Rocket Money sponsored the pod. I used Rocket Money, but I kind of used it like, Okay, blah, blah, blah. Something about subscriptions, not knowing what I have, but I'm like, I know what I have. Well, I didn't. There's so many streaming services. I had a ton of double ups, like some streaming services had multiple things within them, but I was still paying for them individually. So Rocket Money was able to cancel a few. Apparently... I needed it. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending. It helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending around like 80 bucks on subscriptions, when in reality, it's more like 200. It adds up so fast. When you're signed up for so many things, it's easy to totally lose track. As I've learned with Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones that you don't want and just press a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money is like your concierge. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to like 20%. 
All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. Okay, that's incredible. What I also love is Rocket Money lets you monitor all of your expenses in one place and they recommend custom budgets based on your past spending. They'll even send you notifications when you've reached your spending limit. I don't like those emails, but I need them. With over 3 million users and counting, Rocket Money customers have saved an average of $720 a year. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash she speaks. That's rocketmoney.com slash she speaks. Rocketmoney.com slash she speaks. I love that. But so Jenna finally shows up and then they all go off on her. Um, Jenna does seem a little busted because I think it's Cy who says, yeah, we are annoyed because you just didn't want to fly with us because you didn't want to fly coach. And Jenna's like, what's it? What's it who the, who's, who's, <laughs> don't be silly. It's like, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's like, I don't think she even remembered saying that. I got a, I got a feeling in that moment. She's like, did I say that? Cause she will say like, I was on anesthesia. Like I was just right. waking up from dental surgery. So Aaron. Right. Um, but yeah, she. Fuck. I couldn't, I, I felt so bad for Jenna in this moment because she's like, you guys have all this perfect skin and whatever. And Cy uh-huh. goes, I got a spray tan, Jenna. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't, she's uh-huh. talking about a disorder that she's talked about. And I didn't like how they were like, she's sure shown a lot of skin for someone who doesn't want to show her skin. I'm like, so are you questioning that she has the disorder? Well, I right. don't, it's like you're picking on someone who's talking about something very private and personal. Uh-huh. And you're like, and that's a cop out. Bryn says, I'm like, this is coming off real heartless, guys. It is, especially from a, a cast of people that are begging her to open up to her. And right? then she opens up. This is the way you're reacting to her. It's like, ah, I think I'll keep, I'll, I'll stay being an introvert. Thank you. I'm okay with this. But then Not along comes anything. Aaron. They're all going back. And then Aaron goes, we just wanted you to be here with us. But you're here now. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You, so she's you back on the other started side. this. Mm-hmm. You did it. Okay. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Oh. All right. Now let's do this most recent one. Okay. At dinner at the Sunshine uh-huh. Shack, Uba, I love Uba and Jenna ordering virgin drinks. I love that like it's just a, on every other show, it's a huge deal when someone doesn't drink. Now right. it's like, they're like, we just don't, we're coming into this not drinking. It's like, it's not going to be a conversation. I'm, I'm very happy not to have Sonia to worry about let me just say that god that's what i'm it's like too much it's like anxiety anxiety, yes yeah it's like she's gonna have one sip of alcohol and she's gonna be like hitting on the server and falling over cooter out like (laughs) you know it's too much cooter Cooter is so underused in the world today i don't remember even who i heard I, i think it was actually um from a a dance instructor that I had. <laughs> he was, uh, his name was Michael Owens. I think he's still alive, but I'm sure he's long retired. <laughs> and he did, um, he did like, he was, had been a Fosse dancer. So his classes mm-hmm. were like Fosse jazz type of thing. And he was, he would just rail on us all the time. He was like your classic mean, but jokingly mean teacher. Mm-hmm. And when he would show certain moves, he would go, okay, you're going to go your hips around, cooter, 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 and then come back through. <laughs> So it's it's like always in my head. Uh, and we gave it's him an that underused cooter. word. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. But so okay, Jessel at the dinner makes the joke because they were talking about Jenna's clothes, and she's like, "We'll do a dress a dress swap, not wife swap, a dress swap." And Bryn's like, "Don't even <laughs> fucking." But then Uba. I did not anticipate Uba being so... Here's what I think happened. She went, okay, now I've been missing a lot of events, so let me earn my check right quick. Mm Mm-hmm. Uba said, look, I got to catch up. All the all the mess that I didn't start these past three episodes, I got to start right now. So She literally is like, like, we're not dropping it, guys. I'm going to make this a thing. Exactly. And what I really love, I don't know if you've seen the preview for next week's episode, but it looks like Uber in this trip, like Uber is in charge of the girls on this trip. Like she makes Aaron look like she wants to cry 
And I was like, oh, goodness. Kind of love it, though. That's my level of petty. Just saying. I think it's gotten, I think it's kind of becoming clear that Uba is a little bit of a princess herself. And yeah, you didn't, we didn't really notice it at first. But now she's like, if you're going to vacation with me, I'm going to be a brat about it. And I'm going to expect <laughs> my things and I'm not going to apologize. And that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, she asks Sai. How, Sai, how would you feel about it? And Sai's like, of course I would not. Of course Sai said she wouldn't be mad. She's like, but I'm not right. the one to ask. Um, but <laughs> Bryn is so mad, obviously. And Aaron is like, thank you, Uba. The only one really standing up for what's right. I'm like, what's... <laughs> okay, everyone needs to chill. This is this is also a quick moment to let us like remember that they're like really good friends outside of this group. And that next week, when it's kind of like setting up. I think they're actually... I yeah. think, is New York off this week? This upcoming Sunday? Oh, well, thank I think you they for take off thank this you Sunday. for how do you what's what's the is it a holiday? I I don't know. No, I was wondering because like they said that episode comes on on the twenty fourth. Oh, like, did they? Uh-huh. Oh, look at you observing. It's weird. Okay, <laughs> so just that's a good heads up then. Okay, right. There As opposed go. to me like looking for it on Sunday and being like, oh, they don't. Right it. there we go. No um, Atlanta. No good Rome, eye. So. Good <laughs> eye. Yeah. Bryn does give. The most sincere apology, but it's <laughs> for calling the party boring. <laughs> she, the way she, it's like she sets it up like she's about to really give her the apology for talking to Abe like that. Mm-hmm. But she's like, no, no, I do want to sincerely apologize for calling your party boring. I didn't mean that. <laughs> It was very entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I I just wanted to hurt you. And Aaron's like, I, I'm i so confused. Oh, my God. I'm so confused. What's happening? I don't get it. What are you doing? Uh, I don't understand. Gosh. Jess will try. She tries to step in and be like, please, like, don't do this. Like, it, we were laughing. It's not a big deal. But Uba is like, no, 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 no. We're not done with this drama yet, guys. We got to do at least one full scene with me in it, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's like, bullshit. You would be mad if someone said that to your husband. You would be really mad. I'm like, mm-hmm. she probably wouldn't, honestly. It's right. Pavit. The way she treats Pavit, like, she'd be like, that's fine. Take him. <laughs> right. You can have him. You, you can, can have absolutely him. have him with his <laughs> carrot in his Prosecco glass. <laughs> Which is still, I don't understand. I still don't get that. Me neither. Do not get that. But then Bryn Bryn flips it, as a good housewife does, and she goes, now are you going to apologize to me for accusing me of something so awful? I'm like, quit while you're ahead, Bryn. Right. Gosh. Quit while you're ahead. Yeah. But then Sai calls the server over to order... (laughs) The scene was so incredible because Aaron keeps going, I mean, we're having a conversation. Like, we're let us finish the conversation. And it's just like, I'll have the salmon. Right. I mean, we were talking. I'll we were talking. Snapper. I'll Thank do the you. lobster. Oh, and he's like totally unaware of we what she's saying. We just caught it today. Yes. Oh, my God. He's following up with like, he's so excited. Yes. You're going to love it. It's so fresh. Oh, my Aaron God. Aaron is losing it. I did like that Cy tried to regulate it. And Bryn was like, stop we don't need you to referee because literally as soon as she did that they apologized to each other and they made up and it was over right and i was like take that (laughs) sigh but then they get on to jenna and yes not flying with them and dumbass sigh is like i think that's exactly why you didn't want to go because you didn't want to fly coach i'm like oh just Mm. guys like jenna even if that was the case is it that horrible right we gotta, I'm, we gotta drop it. I'm okay it. with it, right? I'm okay with it. Maybe it's just me, but uh, if the if the lady wants to fly, uh, well, she said she didn't get first class. She can only get she business, business class on that flight. Yeah. But still, I'm like, that's that close enough. <laughs> like you're right there. Like I can reach mm-hmm. back and touch you. Like hi, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. right there. It's okay. We're good. It's okay. We're fine. I'll, I'll yeah. still. Yeah. There we go. Um, but then this is where they uncover and Jenna has like a breakthrough. And this was really, really sweet and 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 kind of of Jenna to open up like this, considering the way that they've treated her <laughs> like for <laughs> opening up. I was like, wow, she's I don't think she even had a choice. They just kind of kept badgering her and like. Bryn saying, you know, you could have shared that your name was Judith when I was crying about my family. And I like that they showed a reenactment of like what it would have been like if Jenna in that moment had been like, you know, my real name is Judith. 
when they showed that they right. were like, Jenna, be quiet. Like, it doesn't, she's like, that doesn't even make sense. But Bryn just gets right. out of hand. Bryn starts going off and like, she probably like, she kind of winds herself up a little bit. All the time. All the time. Um, and we, we will get to that when we're done with this. And we're going to talk about the Bryn of it all on the social oh, yeah. medias because uh, it's been a thing. We'll, we'll end with yeah. that. Um, but Jenna explains, like, my mom had severe Asperger's, so she didn't have any friends. We weren't allowed to have TV on. No noise in the house. Oof. Her whole life? Oh, that's a weird existence. Yeah. Yeah. My God. And her mom had, like, zero emotion. Like, when you, and Asper- it is true, people with Asperger's, that can be one of the unfortunate things things so yeah. she's like it just all makes sense like you can see little tiny jenna with a mom like that and now she's just doing the best she can to survive in this world outside right, of that connections and, silence yeah. silence in a home Oof. yeah oof that's a lot mm-hmm. that is a lot but then it's jessel's turn to tell her story <laughs> and boy does she tell it <laughs> uh, she just thinks they need to hear all of it our parents were born in kenya they immigrated to london they didn't have a choice she was my mom's two brothers wanted to be photographers so they moved to Paris, and they're like why are we <laughs> we asked about your story like right what happened to you um but her big struggle was that she thought she was going to get some cool fashion internship and instead she was just unpacking boxes for a year <laughs> Jessel. All righty. Jessel. But then she turns to Aaron and says she is not used to being catered to, for the record. And then Aaron goes, you don't really think your family caters to you? And they flash back to Pavit and her mom, Nilam, doing anything Jessel asks of them and being clearly like, right. terrified of her. Cleaning the, the cabinets mm-hmm. and like the countertops and everything. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. had like the, the Myers from Target like spraying everywhere. Like, yeah, you're you're a little you're a little catered to, Jess. So I think fi- that's fair to say. She is the Lisa Barlow of this cast. Like yeah. unaware, oblivious, like it's it works for me on a TV show. Mm-hmm. I think I would still find it funny in real life. Like I think having like a delusional friend like that, because she cl- Jessel has a good sense of humor about herself. It seems, yeah. Except yeah, yeah, for when yeah. it comes to this, for some reason. <laughs> um, it's so sad. The next day, Jenna's all covered up and sad. Mm-hmm. But Bryn is nice. She's like, "Do you want to see my boobs?" <laughs> Jenna meant it. That's Jenna a was nice like, "Offer." Yes. Jenna's like, "Yes." Do it. Please. But then she didn't. I'm like, you little tease. Don't Uh tease something like that. That's not. She's going through a breakup. Hook a sister up. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Uba gets so pissed off that there was a hair in the food. She's like, (coughs) 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 yells at them, stop playing with your hair. We're around food. God. You know what? I actually, I was laughing and then I kind of like panicked for a little moment because I was like, oh no, is that like, you know, because. We just like had this whole thing about Jenna's hair and how it falls out and stuff. So I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh no! Yeah. Right. So I was like, "Oh no!" Is this like a thing? Like, are we make, making her uncomfortable right now? But then it seems like it was just like one of like Bran well, or someone's thank hair. Thank God! So. Thank God! Jenna right. didn't go there. I didn't even think of that. Oh my god! I pa- I like had a little panic. I was like, "Oh no!" I don't want to. I don't want it to go there. Like that's not where I want this episode to go, and it didn't. Thank God. So. Thank God. We're okay. Narrowly We're okay. escaped that. Instead, we got. You- uh, wait, whoa! You go. Oh, but that noise that like she because she was doing a lot in that. I don't know. It always brings me back to like Marlo and this noise she makes every time she like. Have you heard like she does it like randomly all the time? And they finally like they highlighted it on one of the after shows. What she makes this like Rah! like this just noise like all she does it all the time. Rah! And it's just like like what she's is gonna that? throw up. It's, yeah, it's like like something's in her throat or something. Oh. It's, it's the most the sky. I hate it so much. They did a compilation. <laughs> on one of the after show episodes and I about I about screamed in my house. I'm like, please stop it. Like I cannot deal with like that kind of noise. Like it grosses me <laughs> out so much. I hate it. <laughs> oh. Sai opens up about her mom's alcoholism, though. Mm-hmm. And that was it, it shed a lot of light onto Sai and the type of right. person that she was. Um uh, and it was a it was a touching story. It was sad. She was like sixteen too, I think she said when it, the uh-huh. drinking started, and that's really shitty because sixteen is a super formative age. So okay, so I totally give it to you. Um, but then she says that her mom's ashes are in a shopping bag in her closet, and I'm with Jessel. I hope it's an Hermes or Chanel bag, not a Target, <laughs> right. or Walmart. Heaven forbid. <laughs> First question I had, like, what shopping bag? 
Like, right. Like, what is this? Like, hopefully you mean, like, in an urn, like, inside of a bag? or like, Yeah, a, it has what, to be. Uh, something. Like, I need to know what They the usually, they put them in, like, a box. I feel like it's in the box that, it, yeah. that they put it in, in, like... I hope like a, a hopefully very nice Louis Vuitton. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And just I yeah. love that idea though about like growing the tree with mm-hmm. the ashes. Mm-hmm. I've seen it like on only on TV though. I've never seen it, like in real life, but like I love that thought. So they're like that. Go do that. Go upstate and you know stay. Go get some nice food and then like do yeah. that ceremony. That's night. Include the kids and your husband. That'll be a nice little. Thing, do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Do it. Don't just leave her in the the Walmart bag. I don't like that. I don't like it exactly. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, after the, they go to the beach, they have a little cute time on the beach. Um, and of course, and I'm, I'm not Jenna though. Jenna, Jenna, <laughs> poor thing, is just like the photographer. But she, that's when she's like, I. This is my whole life. Like this, I'm used to this. So it's like, oh, yeah, I feel bad. I just see like see no. little awkward Jenna like on the beach. Like, you know what I mean? I so wish sweet. I. That, it's so sad because I wish she would like. I don't know. I, I wish something would like trigger in her and like give her that kind of self confidence. But I know that's like a lot easier it's a lot, yeah. said than done. And like I don't even know because like I, I think about like they're so different though. But like, uh, like how many people like Winnie Harlow inspired oh. just by like you know every time she's on a runway or in a bikini or something totally. like that. So I'm like, man, I wonder how many people like because I'm I I, ne- I didn't know this was like a condition. So I wonder how many people there are like suffering with this kind of thing and like are the exact same way that, like, I wonder if there was somebody on TV that, not that it, you know, it shouldn't fall on Jenna to do that, but, Mm -hmm. like, if there was someone on TV that, like, was super confident with it and, and, you know, kind of showed that side of themselves, it'd probably help a lot of people. And I know that's, oh, I feel bad. It's next to impossible with the mom she had, right? Like, the mom that she couldn't go to and talk about it. Her mom wasn't going to be like, you look great. Who cares? Like, Mm -hmm. you, none of that was happening. So she just had to, like, sit with it internally and think she was weird. Wow. Yeah. But they go to lunch, and this is where Bryn tells the story of going to have her eggs frozen, and then they asked for a name of someone (laughs) that she would want the embryos to be be with because embryos are more viable or something and Aaron doubts it and then straight up (laughs) says like that doesn't even sound real now (laughs) as much as I could agree that it does sound like a bit of an elaborated made up story Mm -hmm. you don't have to say it don't embarrass your friend like that right and and it also is more uncomfortable for you now you've made it weird because Mm -hmm. you've said it and it's just going to make the whole group uncomfortable. What's Bryn supposed to say? Yeah, I just made that up. Right. It She's was not going to say that. It was mean spirited for the sake of being mean spirited. I don't like. Like I know. Like I felt like she looked at someone who I don't know who's across from her and said. Uba. But she said like, "Oh, was it Uba?" And she was like, "That doesn't sound real." And I think Uba was like, "I know what." Or something like kind of agreeing with her. And I think that was all the confidence she needed to like blurted out loud like that that sounds made up i don't believe that and now it's the whole thing and it's like did you really need to say that like people then, don't understand you don't always have to say shit out loud not then, always then aaron calls Bryn sensitive oh you're so sensitive uh, i'm like oh okay okay right lady <laughs> all right <laughs> um they end up making up at the end of the episode. Bryn takes Bryn takes the night off to not do dinner, which I fully respected, and I like the way she handled it. She talks to Sai. Mm-hmm. Sai's like, you get one time out, but totally get it. And then she talks to Aaron, and I thought that was really cool that she went. She's like, I'm going to take tonight off of dinner, but I didn't want you to think it's because I was mad at you. That was smart, because if you really are not trying to be drama, you would right. do that and not let your absence and 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 silence speak volume right you Welcome know what more I mean? questions than it should yeah it, she's yeah. like i really don't want it to be a thing so i'm gonna squash it because if she just didn't show up to dinner aaron would have 100 percent been like i guess she's mad at me you know what i mean you're right so good job well i guess she's mad at me but i guess now she knows how i feel when she oh. went to abe and said that we should get divorced and it was gonna it was definitely gonna <laughs> make her be the victim there. all over again <laughs> was going there Mm -hmm. but now let's discuss Bryn's social media activities let's so one of our good friends here in the community bravo and botox um i know that i know that you've been on her podcast i've had Mm -hmm. her on my podcast um she's awesome and she her pot her instagram account is all twitter reposts she does twitter Mm -hmm. roundups and she gets good ones Mm -hmm. and 
I didn't know exactly like as I looked through the round the roundups, but nothing stood out to me as being like so scathing against right. Rin that I was like, "Ooh, she's gonna get mad at you for this one." In one of the roundups, she had, it said something like, "She doesn't ha- sorry, Jenna doesn't have to go on like seeking arrangements or whatever to get a business class." It's clearly a joke. Like it's clearly right. all of it. All of it is. But Bryn messaged Bravo and Botox and was oh. like, how dare you spread this misinformation and posted it in her stories and then posted her resume. Girl. Okay. I, <laughs> Bravo and Botox then made a fabulous clapback post to the whole it was, thing. It, it was, was so fucking good. I was mm-hmm. like slow, slow clap on that. Because she, the one that she did use was Nini's, uh, Nini's clip from the reunion where she goes, I post what I post and a mm-hmm. hit dog will holler. Yes. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Because Bryn is like trying to prove that she actually does work a lot and they just don't show it on the show. And here's my resume. Well, the fucking BP oil spill is on her PR resume. Mm-hmm. And that was... I didn't anticipate, when she says PR, it's Bryn. So I kind of imagine like fashion. I don't know what I imagine, but I didn't imagine these big companies like Johnson and Johnson. Right. BP Oil. Like I didn't, I'm like, oh, you've been working for like that that shit. That was like, like they made fun of that PR campaign on South Park. Like it's nothing to like, it's all, I mean, like not to to diminish her career, but like that, I would, that wouldn't be the one I highlighted on my resume. Just Mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. I mean, so that killing was thousands pretty, of animals in the sea. That was pretty <laughs> eye-opening. Yeah. You know, that was like, oh, that's what you've been up to? It also right. explains why you have so much money, because those companies pay big, because mm-hmm. you're lying, essentially, in your work. You know right. what I mean? They're like, right. here's what happened, now spin it. So, mm-hmm. so she's had a hard job, let's say that, because she's been working for these big companies that are fucking corrupt. Johnson & Johnson? Right. <laughs> Johnson and Johnson's right. like notoriously horrible. Okay, uh-huh. so it was a uh, she lost her damn mind. I was it's disappointed so to see how many creators though backed up Bryn. Well, people like they jump on it, and I'm yeah, like, guys, this could have happened. Like, this could have happened for <laughs> any. This could have happened to any of us, honestly. Exactly. The, like, were the jokes a little harsh? But yeah, that's kind of it's. But it's it was someone else's joke. First of all, that's right. the other part that I thought was so weird. Like, I don't know if Bryn also went after the person that put the tweet, like, wrote right. the tweet. I don't know. She but, doesn't seem like it. But. Right? It was. Uh, it felt like a crusade against Bravo and Botox. And I can right. only imagine what that was like for her when she opened up her phone after work and was like, oh. <laughs> right. Okay. She had gained so many like new followers that day too, and she was like, "Why? Why are all these people like following me? What is happening?" <laughs> She's like, "I have five hundred no new clue. followers, so thank you, Bryn." Hi. Uh, mm-hmm. I like one. I feel like that is always a weird choice when someone on one of the shows attacks a content creator, one that's like purposely trying to highlight your show and get people to watch and get engagement and all this stuff. But then I also think it's a really weird choice. Not to be like, okay, I get it. I don't know why production isn't showing this side of my life either. I don't know why y'all haven't, after what, nine episodes, haven't been in my apartment either. Mm-hmm. It's all weird. Like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to these things, but uh, <laughs> exactly. it, it's kind of, it's all right. I'm like, it sucks, but maybe you'll get to know more of me next season and see what I do. And then you could have explained it, like, going that route over, like, the carousels have like 10 posts in them every mm-hmm. time and it's like multiple so like the Roni one could be like five parts by itself yep. and like that was like one of like what 30 posts total mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she was like flipping out about mm-hmm. this one thing that wasn't even a lose I to had like to search for it right. I had to right I'm like what is she talking about yeah I had to find it I was like wait this that's Chow. not all the way not completely so it was a little it it maybe Bryn did not anticipate getting any negative feedback because she uh. might have thought she was going to be the clear star the clear winner yeah and of it, she's most likely been accused of being a sex worker of some kind because it seems to be such a a button yeah for her, a trigger for her. Mm-hmm. you know so clearly this is like a thing but 
she gets in the show, the platform gets bigger, and she gets criticism, and she's she seems like she's not very accustomed to criticism. Uh huh. Because you know what I mean, like size getting it left and right, and I don't see Sai right. going on some big crusade against it. You know what I mean? No. So a little disappointed. Yeah, I thought we could have handled that better, but that's all right. It's okay. We'll move on. Not well, bitch. We spend so much time learning about how to prevent pregnancy. Like that's our number one goal. That's been my number one goal forever. But what happens when you actually want to have kids and you have no idea what's going on in there? Can you have kids? What's the journey going to look like? Well, that's why modern fertility was created. It is an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you get your personalized results within six months business days. You get insight into your hormone levels, like your ovarian reserve, aka if you have more or fewer eggs than average for your age, and other really important factors that can impact your fertility. And the results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Isn't that cool? Traditional hormone testing at a fertility clinic? Oh, that's costing you over 600 bucks. But modern fertility tests the same general set of hormones for only a $179. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash she speaks, you get $20 off your test. Plus you can get reimbursed for the test through your FSA or HSA. If you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash she speaks. That means your test will only cost $159 which is a fraction of what it would cost at a fertility clinic. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash she speaks. Modernfertility.com slash she speaks. Enough! Now let's go to Atlanta. I'm, yes. oh my God, I had to stop myself from sending you every single <laughs> My God, my God. My God. Yeah. Uh, Courtney? Half a Courtney can <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh okay so we pick we picking we're picking up where Andy has said yeah it seemed like you and Ralph talked a lot about the affair before it hit the blogs what did he tell you in other words sounds like you guys fucking planted it that's what it sounds mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. but then we're pick- Drew's going that don't you ever speak on my son I really don't like Marlo joining in like oh okay uh, with Cor- I'm right. like excuse me she's talking about children that's the number right. one rule i thought we all agreed on a long time mm-hmm. ago okay but when fucking courtney i talked about this last week when she goes oh <laughs> wah, wah. oh i felt a violence inside of me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but then she goes i didn't say anything about your son and andy goes you did you, you did. You're and, right. And then Drew's like, you didn't know the cameras were rolling. And then now Courtney goes, Chow, I knew the cameras were rolling. I said it multiple times. Then why did you just say you didn't talk about her son? Exactly. You just so said that. So you knew that. what the hell they were talking about. So maybe you're just a big ass liar You're like a Ralph big is. ass liar. That's mm-hmm. what you are. And then Courtney goes, I meant to say it. By making, I had, I wrote down so much of this dialogue, so I'm so sorry, but like the <laughs> things that they were saying, I was like, this is crazy. By making their dad seem like a narcissist, buying into your fake storyline, you have destroyed them single handedly, destroyed no. your own kids. Courtney, that, that would have been enough to jump off that couch and act like Portia <laughs> at that season six reunion. Are you kidding me? Oh, I, thank you, Kenya. She's like, that is so wrong. You're evil. And Courtney's like, mm-hmm. I'm not talking to you, to the peanut gallery. Ah. She actually, she couldn't think of the word gallery. She was like, the peanut crowd over here, the peanut guy. <laughs> is that what she <laughs> said? <laughs> peanut people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is she trying to say right now? What are you talking about? And Candy didn't even say anything. Like, I was, Candy was just Candy watching. Candy really disappointed me. And like, but she, but like, Courtney attacked Candy too. She's like, I'm not talking to you too, the peanut mm-hmm. gallery, you know, the peanut mm-hmm. crowd or whatever. And Candy's like, I didn't say, like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm not, like, not actually, even I here. actually am not backing up Drew at all. Don't worry about it. No, like, right. That was disappointing for real. Everyone failed Drew at this reunion. Though. Except Everyone Kenya. Failed. Except Kenya, yeah. Mm-hmm, 100%. Andy was pretty good too. Andy definitely stayed very much 
team Drew. Like he, I was worried that Andy was going to be indulging Ralph, but he definitely made it clear. Like I'm not list, I'm not believing anything you say, and that I was relieved right. about that because sometimes Andy will like drag him along with them. I'm like, ugh, uh-huh. I am not here for that. We are not just because Drew lies a lot. I said this on last week's episode, but I'm going to say I didn't, you didn't hear it. Um. When you're in a bad relationship and you're covering mm-hmm. up for your shitty boyfriend or husband, you mm-hmm. li- you do shit. You go you like you li- sh- all of the lies. It seems like had something to do with Ralph. All of her lies, like the the chef and whatever, and Ralph's yep. telling Courtney a different version of than he, what he told the guys at that healing event. Like he's a liar. So yes. Drew has been practiced in lying for a long time now. And so to uh-huh. me, she just clearly seems like someone who has been in a shitty relationship, not acting like herself, lost herself right. completely. A- a- absolutely. Drew mm-hmm. is, like, <laughs> when it comes to like the other ladies, Drew absolutely lies all the time. All the time. But it's never like any lie like so clever that I don't know whether she's lying or not. <laughs> we all know when Drew's lying. Like it's not like she's not like the world's like biggest sociopath <laughs> or something. Like we know when Drew's lying. Like it's she's a part a of the fun, liar. honestly. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's honestly a part of the appeal. We're like, God damn it, Drew, that that that's not true. But like for her, like Courtney had gumption. Like you have some balls to come to this reunion and like jump up and down the way you did. Like, are you kidding uh-huh. me? Uh-huh. I would you no. Courtney, no. get the hell out of here. And get I'm so glad out. you you want to do all that big bad talking. I'm glad that Allison saw your ass backstage. That's what I was waiting on. I was hoping she would have grabbed it. Did you see Andy was the one that had to like kind of break them up? You had to like really look closely in the background, but he was the one like his dressing room was like across from the one that Andy was Ralph there. Ralph had. Mm-hmm. And he came I out. Po- I posted memes. Y'all go look at them. One of the ones I, I I zoomed in on that moment. I'm like, Andy is the one like literally stopping. The, I know. <laughs> I'm grabbing my phone. I have to look at it. Okay. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. He is literally in the background. Like he so, opens up his dresser door. <laughs> shut up. Okay. Your most recent ones. Okay. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Underrated, underrated. Da, 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 da. Here we are. Ah! It's Andy. <laughs> How did you spot that? I literally, like, this was my, I think, second viewing. I was watching the uncensored version, and I just so happened to get a glimpse of someone with, like, that peppery hair. And I was like, who is that? Who is that white man? And then, like, at this Atlanta reunion. And then I was like, is that Andy? Like, breaking up this fight right I now? just want it to be known, guys, that the clip, you barely see Andy. Right. <laughs> you, that was a that was a good that was a good eye. It's not like he, you really have to, like, struggle to see mm-hmm. it. You're right. Dang. I'm nosy. I'm nosy. You are nosy. That's it comes in handy. It comes in real <laughs> good handy during this stuff. There we go. Um okay, but back to this, all right? Yes. <laughs> tie. The tie thing. I finally mm-hmm. I'm I refuse to indulge it. It's all fucking Ralph's bullshit. Yeah. It's all it is. And he's mm. he he capitalized on a moment where she wasn't being honest about the kiss. And I said mm-hmm. last week, it might be because her mom is a pastor. I couldn't remember if she was a right. pastor or a therapist, but she's a pastor. She is a pastor. So mm-hmm. there might be that reason for it. Um, even mm-hmm. though she was on record at the reunion saying, the the Bolo reunion saying, I've kissed a woman before. Mm-hmm. She said that there. She wasn't, like I said, sorry, I'm repeating myself, but she wasn't going through a contentious divorce with Ralph at that time. Right. She wasn't in a good place with Ralph at that time. So that's probably a little bit of why it had shifted. And I hate that Mm -hmm. Candy's not picking up on that. Someone that like will literally use every negative thing she's mm-hmm. ever said, done, and th- for some reason, like kissing a woman is a negative thing. But I feel like but, he's he's the type to go to uh, court to use that to like take the kids away from her. A hundred percent, something like super weird. Like, he, a hundred, he's a fucking weirdo. He's exactly. And so, um, it, at one point though, at one point, oh my god, I wanted to fucking kill her. Sonia goes, kids should be off limits, and she goes, she has adorable kids. It, don't talk about her children at all now after that. She lied. Right. And then she, as if this is some big smoking gun. She lied and went to a basketball game. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that is not a crime, number one. Right. All the times Ralph has lied about where he is and where he's and bitch, going. Don't you live in Tampa? Ex- Hello? Uh, okay. So <laughs> yeah. I don't. Don't do that with us. 
all uh-huh. right? And then Andy goes, did you visit Ty in Texas? And I like the way Drew goes, yeah, first of all, I saw her. I went to her game. Okay, and? Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay, and? She's allowed to joke and say that she has a crush on, a girl crush on Ty. And it doesn't uh-huh. fucking mean she's having an affair. However, I will say <laughs> that when the DMs come out, the messages come out, Drew mm-hmm. certainly doesn't look at those. No. <laughs> Even Monietta goes, Drew, look at him. But she's right. like, I don't know. I don't, I don't. Clear your name. I'm like, just, Drew, that's, that's damning. Now, she may just not want to Kenya be, was trying to help her in that moment, too. But then, she was but really the, trying. But then it like, didn't. this is nothing. This and then nothing. Candy, Candy goes, like, um, she goes, I didn't see that. <laughs> right. Candy's honest to a fault. She's like, what? Are you kidding? We don't, she's like, we don't text like this. Yeah, it's, <laughs> dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... It it was it was nasty. And then but yeah. I like that Drew knows exactly what's going on. She goes, her and Ralph, they got together. He has coached her on things, and I don't have to answer to her. And she doesn't. Nope. She doesn't. Nope. Okay. Andy then asks when Ralph told her when he was planning on divorcing Drew. She says she lies. She says he knew when he knew for sure about the affair, about the affair that she was having, had evidence, but on speak on it. Uh-huh. She said he told her as soon, basically as soon as they met each other. Child. So which one is it? And then when Andy Neither. goes, when she goes, I can't remember exactly. I'm like, oh, because you don't have the storyline, the timeline exactly. coordinated. Exactly. That's why. That's the only Tom reason. Schwartz and Tom Sandoval. Uh huh. All uh-huh. over again. She goes, yeah. it was it was after Portugal, and he was heartbroken about it. Oh. Okay. Okay. Andy asks Candy to clarify the whole like girl crush thing. And this is when the DMs come out and Sheree, she's like, well, um, I mean, I might've got something. It doesn't take two seconds. Andy goes, what are they? She goes, oh, well, here we are. are. (laughs) They are right behind me. I, you know, there we go. But then when Drew goes, when Drew goes, if you see my DMs, my DMs are popping. I'm like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, that. Isn't it wonderful no, to say? Don't go, don't go that direction. Don't, don't no. say that because I mean, now, sure now I want to know what they, because it feels like you're just trying. She's like, we're friends. We're friends. They're friendly. I'm like, mm. okay. Okay. But I need you to look at them. Right. And be like, this isn't even me. Like, I need her to do that. I need her to give right. me. But I think she might not want to just, and she just might not want to indulge anything that Ralph is doing. That I'm right. going gonna, gonna to go with that, okay? I'm right. going to go with right. that. So, because Candy goes, so those are real? And Drew doesn't even look at She's just like, I, I don't know. But then she goes, Ralph has beat the IRS single-handedly. I thought that was interesting to throw in. Yes. Like. Because one. <laughs> put that on the record. God. Right. I'm like, okay, well, one, you've kind of implicated yourself i was gonna bit, say so. you're married so girl. <laughs> right so you beat them too so they might come knocking on both of y'all door jen shaw but i don't i don't know what i can you know what ralph has always i've told y'all he's always given me those i've been waiting for like the left shoot or what is it, the right shoe to drop all this time because i've been feeling like he's mm-hmm. something with mm-hmm. his uh huh. I don't know. We don't know enough about his career uh-huh. to like be confident in saying like he, everything's on the up and up. I don't mm-hmm. know. He's not living the most lavish lifestyle, which I'm like, okay, well, that, that gives me a little comfort. But I've always felt like we don't know nearly enough and it's a little too secretive for it to, I don't know. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh, all right, they go to lunch. Marlo, Marlo and Sheree, they're like looking through the she news and Marlo is just doing the, mo- how is it se- nine seventy five on she and, and she's selling it for $75. Like every store ever. Like, <laughs> shut what up. are you talking about? God. She's like, I already, she already explained it. She's like, I'm not claiming to have original designs. It's a boutique. Right. Like she. A one that's been open for what? 10 years now? Yeah. So stop. Okay. Courtney goes into Ralph's dressing room like a fucking groupie. The way she walked in was so telling. Uh First of all, it didn't look like real genuine friends. I didn't get some vibe that this was like, what's up? He was like, hi, Courtney. His voice is so cheesy. And she walks in and Allison stands in the doorway and Courtney goes to close the door. Don't you shut that door on me. The whole get this bitch out of here. Blah, 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 Uh blah, blah. 
Uh, and then when she turns to go back to Ralph, she goes, I'm so sorry. Like, like a little, like she's like, and he's, he's just sitting there like no reaction. Like, yeah, it's, that's how, that's what my life has been like. It's just dealing with that abuse. Like that, that's the vibe. I, I hate it. God, I, I hate it. I, you can like, this is, oh God, these are these people like, you know, the man that like we hear about in like true crime docs that are the worst kind of person, but even worse than them are those like uh -huh. the women that want to be with them so bad that they go along with everything they say. Not even the one that's married to him. It might be like a friend of someone and she's always going against the wife and agreeing with him Ugh. because she knows that she's like purposely trying to put the wife down all the time. Like they, their energy is just so creepy. The way she goes, Drew has a problem. She's a compulsive liar. And then he, then she realizes like, wait, I got to get this on camera. But you love her and I get it. But you can't keep allowing someone to disrespect you. God. Bullshit. up. <laughs> do oh. not, do not, do not give that man that moment. We, I knew exactly, like she practically like looked at the camera like, oh wait, let me get this in there. I know you love her and I get it, but you, you can't allow her to disrespect you. Right. Mm, it makes me so mad. She's so, been watching so a mad. different show. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but girl, you, you haven't known Ralph nearly long enough to have <sighs> any kind of loyalty to him. You barely. I'm glad Kenya said it. Kenya's like, you don't know that girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, Kenya nailed it. Kenya was yes. fucking on point. So they get mm -hmm. back to the set. They gotta they always gotta like give a nice funny package to clear the air a little bit. So they get yeah. like the sex package. And it ends with Kenya saying, I put threesomes on the map. <laughs> and Andy's like, well, did you really? And she goes, yes, with Twa. And I don't like, Marla tries to throw shade. She's like, and what year was that? Do you not understand what putting something on the map means? Right. Putting no, something on the map means it, it has. <laughs> <laughs> God. Because <laughs> it means it, it could have happened a while ago, but it's the thing that put things on. the. And Andy is right. We need more threesomes with more black people doing threesomes on uh -huh. TV. I would like to vote. Where do we, where do we submit that? Right. <laughs> I would like that too. But I love Candy confesses to having been in a four way. Mm. I think I feel like she was holding back. Uh -huh. I think she, it might have been more than that. When they said orgy, she's like, not a not an orgy. I'm like mm. <laughs> She's like, how many define an orgy? Do, she goes, oh. When she said four, she's like, four is the highest I think is acceptable. <laughs> right. If I, I really get into what I've been doing. <laughs> her and Todd and those NDAs, I know, I know they have some fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Sonya's miscarriage and family package, they go into Okay, that. wait a minute. Oh. The fact, I don't know, I was so, that was the one thing about, like, the negative thing I had to say about this reunion. That was such a hard turn from, like, if you're going to do a fun package, Wait till after that one, maybe, and do the fun package. Like, you go from, like, they literally were talking about eating ass, like, for an entire segment. And then Andy's like, okay, well, Sonya's had a rough year. And I'm like, okay, like, are we going here right now? Like, good Lord. Really? It's so that, true. That's what we're transitioning to right now? Okay. Let me get on board, I guess. It's so oh. true. Um, but she does express her disappointment in Kenya. And uh, that Kenya did not reach out like everyone else did. Um, but Kenya says, I, I, I did call you. You just didn't answer. And Kenya plays this monologue perfectly. Because she, yes. I don't know if I believe she really did call her. Because I just don't know. But I will say that when she does, she goes, when I watched that clip just now, it made me think of how we were going to go through this together. We were going to get pregnant together. Yes. <laughs> and Sonya goes, that's why I was surprised. And Kenya goes, and if you felt I was not supportive, I am sorry, but I promised you I reached out. And then she goes, but look at the blessing you have now. And you look beautiful. You're so beautiful pregnant. <laughs> Bravo. Ooh. Bravo. Sonia was job, like, oh, yep, okay. I can't <laughs> right. do anything with that. So yes. brilliant. And can I, okay. I, I want to change my mind about one thing too. <laughs> now that I'm like, we've seen like the reunion looks in motion. I actually think Sonia looks probably one is one of my favorite looks, I think, now. Because a lot of them look so over the top. <laughs> like a, a lot more over the top than I was expecting. I, I hate Sheree's dress. I, I hate do it so too. much. It it's is so dated. It's so it dated. It's like a bad burlesque costume, but in baby right. blue. Right. 
I hate, I hate that. Like, I love Marlo's look. Marlo eats to me. Mm -hmm. Hate Kenya's look. I mean, I've never hated it. I didn't, her makeup too. It doesn't even look good. Like, it looks like it's not blended right. It's just the color of the hair is so bad. Like, go platinum blonde. See if that works on you. But like, whatever that is, is not, what, I don't even understand what that is. It did like, Candy, love the dress, hate the hair. Oh, I like it. no, I love a bob. You know uh, me. I'm I'm Bobby on. I because, love a bob. It's because it's flip the little flip at the. It's, it's yeah. like it's so like it goes like right here. <laughs> and then it, <laughs> like it's so small. Like make it a little. You know. I don't know. It's, it needs something. Like you need to be able to do like this. Like you know. <laughs> you need something with the bob. That like the me bob. Of love was... and marriage, where she goes. She's over there dancing in her bob. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. No. <laughs> She's like. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. <laughs> I hate it. Candy, I love the dress, though. Dress was yes. eaten down, shoes, See, everything. I love the idea of Drew's dress, but when she stood up to sing, I'm like, what is that cut yeah, right at the that hip was... that makes her look so wide? Exactly. It was, it was so like, unflattering. Something about it. Like, I literally, like, Drew was actually one of my favorites, like, coming into look, this. Makeup, but then hair. this, uh-huh, this episode, when we came, I was like, Ugh. When she like, stood I up, I was know. like, oh, no, no, sit back down. Because right. it, it looked like there was like a like a wire, <laughs> like a right? wire that went around her hip. I don't know what it, it it was a lot going on. But that's why, like to me, sometimes like when you I think Sonya knew like with a cast like this where everyone's going like, whoa, like way over the top. Hers was very simple, but her one one her hair amazing fantastic gorgeous look good you're right dress showed off the bump perfectly mm-hmm. made it probably she's like what four and a half months probably made it look bigger than it is mm-hmm. too because of the material i i think sonya was my favorite look now that i think back on it the only thing i didn't love about her was her makeup it didn't i wanted it either to be a little bit brighter of with the yeah. blue or not blue, like one or the other she like could have done a heavier eye yeah like she, i wanted a little bit more exactly i just yeah, wanted a, like pop. i do something that was driving me crazy drew's eye makeup had smudged on the on the mm. on the eyebrow and I, for a second that's all i could stare at because then she even went to the back to get her because when she walked off set <laughs> i'm like why are they not touching that up they're only going like underneath i'm like somebody right. Right. Some fucker got the mascara that is on her goddamn head. <laughs> making right. me crazy. I couldn't stop staring at it. Um, dude, Andy reads some awful viewer. Qu- Sometimes these viewer questions, like you guys got to <laughs> chill, okay? You got to right. you screen them. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to hear. Oh, that's from so and so, not me. You, you Except- picked them. Except he asked an amazing one last week. But- I can't believe you made it. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you before? No, first time. First but time. I told, see that? It all comes full circle. Because remember, we talked about this actually like a couple months. I completely forgot. We talked about it a couple months ago. But you had asked me. We were talking about random like uh, has like have cast members or production reached out about something like that you post or mm-hmm. to reach out about anything like that kind of something. And that was right after he had like reached out and said like submit some questions for the reunion to me. And so that's what I was talking about. I was like, like, yes, I was like, I will. I was like, I didn't want to ruin it and jinx it though. But I'm like, Oh yay! They put, I was so surprised because I, it was fun to watch because I completely forgotten that I submitted those. It was like two months ago. Yeah. And so I'd forgotten all about the shit. So, I was watching. He's like, Kendrick from Memphis. I was like, wait, is, th- is that me? And then he asked the question from, I had a ton of questions that I submitted and they asked, well, I'm guessing, no- I'm guessing no one submitted any for Marlo, so that's why my question got <laughs> oh picked. Because I did one, for, I I did questions for everyone. I'm like, no, y'all gonna pick one of my fucking questions. You did it. I got there. I'm there. You I'm cemented, you guys. Kendrick from oh. Memphis. Oh my god. But the one Andy oh reads, which was not yours, was no. <laughs> Sonia, you treat your family horribly. I'm like, no, she does. That's not the way to lead in and then ask no. for fam. But then he goes, has your family moved out? This bitch has to do the whole drum roll. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, okay, God. you and your announcements, just answer the question. <laughs> She's like, hold on, let me bring let me bring Ross out here to like rip a shirt off so he can answer the right. question or something. Cut just, a ribbon, like you God. know, like for crying out loud. I am so grateful that Kenya is going to go on the adoption journey. 
I mm-hmm. love so much better than Mark's embryos. Ugh. I was I so know, scared for that. Me. Oh yeah. yeah, I was like, no, 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 no. I don't care if you signed over any. He signed nothing. Nope. Mm-mm. He's gonna yep. find a way to ruin you. And he's going to try to get back into that baby's life. Then he's going to go to court. Well, she's been letting me help raise the child, too. So I might as well have custody and all. It's going to. No, 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 no. Don't do that. No, 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 no. So the last little bit of this Sonya segment is going further into the Kenya thing because of viewer questions like one minute she's helping you raise money. This is to Sonya. One minute she's helping you mm-hmm. raise money and the next minute you're dragging her and shading her relationship with Marlo. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that conversation was what made Kenya unfollow her. <laughs> and it was when they were, it was the like, what's the difference between him and your DMs and uh, what's his name? Martel uh, and Martel DMing yeah. her. Um, and, it wasn't the same thing, but that's fine. For Sonia, she's like, I was trying to call out double standards. But then Kenya goes, but when have you ever called that double standard out for Marlo on camera? Valid question. Very uh-huh. valid question. Sonia goes, uh, in the Latoya video thing. That That is one of those. It's a little different because she seemed like she was really talking shit about Kenya in her scene with Marlo and in that moment that she's talking to that she's like that wasn't cool it doesn't feel this it doesn't feel like shit talky it feels like from friend to friend hey you know what I mean so you're not unbiased Uh, Uh, but then um, Kenya tries to say that Sheree and Marlo were the ones who didn't donate at the charity auction (laughs) but they're like um no we actually were the first to really pay because uh. um, we just didn't want to participate in your rather performative little show moment uh. with all of that, which I could see their point. I could see their point. You know, that was yeah. a bit, it may, and, and Sonia even says like, is, are you there for me without the cameras? Cause I really don't feel like you are. Then they do something that's crazy to me. They cliffhang her sentence, Sonia's sentence, go to commercial and when they come back, they go to Candy's YouTube channel. I'm about to say, we moved like, on completely. I was like, she, you were literally <laughs> finishing her. They totally got confused. Like, they missed a slide or something. Right. They're like, oh, fuck, we totally forgot. Like, oh, whatever. No one really cares. Because I really right. don't. I'm like, I need, get your, I need to get your Ralph. Like, get Ralph yes. on this set before I lose my goddamn mind. Yes. There's a, I, don't, I, I didn't even care about any of the stuff with, like, Sheree and Candy and Marlo. I'm like, I, I can't. Like, I don't have anything just say, left in me to care about this. Right. We, we can move right past it. I do want to say, though, the narrative of, quote unquote, Candy has speak on it and she can sit up yeah. and talk shit about everyone all the time. That is that not the stupidest shit in the world? Like, because all Emily, of you could also have one. Thank you. Go uh, they make a like YouTube barrier, channel. They act like the barrier of entry for like YouTube is like. <laughs> trying to like get a mortgage on like a mansion or something like no like if you want to you have a following you're on the same show she is go start one if you want to talk shit about candy all day talk shit about candy all day on the thing you you can't be mad at her for figuring out ways to monetize things that like for some reason they i'm Sheree and Marlo, for two women that love to spend money, they so act like they're afraid of money, like making money mm-hmm. all the time. I and I do I do love the quote though that Marlo says in this episode when they're like, "Are you jealous of Candy?" Like, no, Candy works, works too, too damn hard for me, for me. <laughs> right? I'm and like, isn't you know that what? the truth? Same. That is <laughs> right? the truth. That like, of course, Marlo's like, I would never, I would right? <laughs> never. But the whole like, bit you know about okay. when, when she when Marlo attempts yet again because Andy's like, now how does something from two years ago with the you know nephew thing how does that so the way she goes andy it was a shooting that happened in her restaurant my nephew just got shot not just two years ago got shot who <laughs> used to work for her i mean how can God. you not tell it's a trigger <laughs> like, uh, uh, he's <laughs> like i'm still failing to understand it did it bother you two years ago it bothered me when i left her house <laughs> candy goes we hugged <laughs> you can tell she is so over her ass she's like i'm so sick of marlo and sheree i don't know what to do like god we don't i don't have the energy for this anymore because your story has changed multiple times marlo about mm-hmm. why you were offended now you're offended for this reason now you're first candy didn't do anything then then there's evidence that she did 
care. But now, oh, but what Marlo goes, you could have sent flowers, chicken wings. <laughs> you could have called my sister and sang a song. You like, could have what? Sang- <laughs> Did you say sang a song? Yeah, she said, you yeah. could call my sister and just sang a song or something. Like, wh- where are we going with this? Like, what is happening in this moment? I'm not calling your sister who I don't know and singing a song I didn't to her. I her say, yes. sing a song. <laughs> yes. Oh, like, my what are, God. What are we even talking about here? Like, what? <laughs> Jesus. You're just inventing shit. You're just like, <laughs> stop it. No one would have thought to do that. God. Oh, my God. And then they go into, like, Drew's word choice, not saying shooting. No one would be careful if it was my stuff. It, C- Candy goes, okay, this is no shade to you, Sheree, but when your stuff was going on with your site, you didn't bring it up. None of them brought it up. But Sheree goes, oh, you did. And I'm like, okay, not now, Sheree. <laughs> Right. We ha- you had time. your turn. Okay. We've already God. been over it a thousand times. So this goes back and forth, back and forth. But then Drew, some for some reason, chimes in and she's like, Marlo should have talked to her. This was an issue between the two of them. And Marlo goes, worry about your marriage. Drew goes, get a husband, <laughs> then you can talk. Marlo goes, get a wife. <laughs> It's, I hate I was, it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I was almost mad how much that made me laugh. I was. I was really. <laughs> <laughs> so quick. So fucking quick. Damn it. Damn it. It was too good. That was good. That might have been one of the, the best lines of the reunion. That cracked me to hell. Oh, so, yeah, it was too good. <laughs> Shut up! That is so stupid! You guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about how much I love this company's products, but I do this because I love you guys, okay? If you don't already know, Kitsch makes all kinds of amazing beauty products from head to toe, but what it's all about with Kitsch is preventative care, okay? When I found out that you should not just be sleeping on a typical pillowcase, but you should be sleeping on a satin pillowcase because not only does it prevent breakage in your hair. It helps prevent wrinkles. I was like, duh. I've never looked back. They also taught me that if I'm using hair ties that are rough on the hair, like your typical elastic bands, not good either. You want the satin on those hair ties. It has been a game changer for me. I've loved this company for years and I just need everyone to know, especially if you're in your 20s, do it now before it's too late. Because once the wrinkles are there, it is so hard to get rid of them. Trust me. And the best part about Kitsch is it's budget friendly. So whatever your budget is, whatever your skin type is, your hair type, Kitsch is all about little indulgences, morning, noon, and night at the right price. And they were started in 2010. Female founded, self-funded. They sold hair ties door to door with a little hustle and a dream, but now they're sold in over 20,000 retail locations. You have heard me talk about the satin pillowcases. They also do them in caps and eye masks. So this is great for your hair and skin while you sleep because think of how many hours we sleep on our face and on our heads and on our hair. Protect it. You may have also heard about the heatless satin rollers. They were the original, no more heat damage, wake up or just leave it in for a few hours and you've got amazing waves. But the latest Kitsch viral craze is the rice water shampoo bars, which can improve your overall hair growth and density. People are like, I'm never using bottle shampoo again. And their hair feels and looks a thousand percent better in between washes. Plus right now for a limited time, you can live your Barbie dream life with the Barbie by Kitsch collection featuring Kitsch's best-selling satellite cases in the iconic Barbie pink. I just recently, maybe two weeks ago, re-upped my pillowcases. They got some amazing colors in for the spring. I got the sage and the blush pink, but I'm thinking I need to get that Barbie pillow because I like it. Right now, Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash she speaks. That's right. 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, spelled K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash she speaks. One more time, mykitsch.com slash she speaks for 30% off your entire order. Anyway, now let's skip to Ralph. Yes. 
Get his dumb ass out here. He's so somber. He's like, he's like, oh, I'm in my little puppy dog Ralph moment. Ooh. This is how you know he's a gaslighter and a manipulator because that is the that's a quintessential sign of when you come out and you're doing like that. Uh, mm. I, you know what? Doing the the Heather and Terry back in the day from OC doing the Are you okay? Mm-hmm. You know, you should do this. And uh, uh, then uh, it's like, okay, don't, don't know. We're not doing, you're not gonna about to paint me like I'm the one not making sense in this situation. As if I shouldn't be upset that you disappeared for days, that you cheat on me. You're going to audition for damn it, Magic Mike. You, uh, <laughs> your ass got a cousin that who might not be a cousin. She live in Tampa and all. Like, no, 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 no. You're not going to paint me out to think that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. We're not doing that. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Uh, he's like Ugh. Andy goes how you doing he's like best I can okay <sighs> okay I don't I can't Kenya <laughs> has to coach Drew because Drew doesn't even want to participate but Kenya is like right. just you gotta you just you gotta just do uh-huh. it just try so they go to the package and this is when that little screen at the bottom is so vital <laughs> <laughs> you know this is when I'm like show me the faces but fucking yes. Drew with her damn fruit, she's holding the God. peach. I'm like, don't, don't do it. So as soon as they're done, she goes, pass that over to him. Andy can't <laughs> wait. Andy's like, no problem. Here you right. go. He loves it. But Andy goes, I'm still working on my plum. I'm so right. <laughs> He's so, so got- grateful for that plum. <laughs> do you think she traveled like from Atlanta to New York with all in her bag? Or, or did she, she send someone? She was... Did she go, right. I need you to get me? And I feel like they didn't know. I feel like it wasn't even a peach. That looked like a nectarine to me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Whoever went to the store was like, they didn't have peaches. So I got a plum right. and, a, and a nectarine. She's like, like this. She's uh, like, close enough. Close enough. Give it to me. Yeah. It's we're a almost piece on. of fruit. Yeah, exactly. Right. We're almost on. Give it to me now. We're almost on set. Action. <laughs> but I love that she gave it to Andy. That's so funny. So she was so like... Can you hand that over to him, please? Yeah, <laughs> like, and, and Drew, he's you like, are so old Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> she is so old Hollywood. <laughs> so Andy asks if they have rules about how they interact in the house. And mm-hmm. Ralph asks Drew if she wants to go first. And she goes, no, I'm letting you have your moment. Take it. <laughs> I loved that. I was like, yeah. Oh, I thought Drew did so amazing in this whole thing oh yes she got like she got his ass the monologues were incredible Uh uh-huh he he annoyed me so bad during these first couple of questions because every time he would stop and think about an answer but then he would turn up the do you want to take this one Uh i'm like that is so passive like shut up everything he does annoys the hell out of me now and like like anyone who's watching this and going yeah ralph seems like he's totally being honest and sincere Right. Like, you have to get your radar checked if you're not picking up on that guy, because, mm-hmm. excuse me, he's talking all <laughs> fucking low and timid. I'm, my notes go, he's talking so fucking low and timid, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, exactly. He goes, I'm here so that my kids have the correct representation of who their father is. Um, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't think they're going to be watching this. Right. So all that really matters is how you act to them in real life. They're not watching the Atlanta reunion, dude. Exactly. Okay. It's you're a lot of third, things. You're third graders, like stop it. It's a lot of things that Drew's, that's actual slander. It's not real. So I really just want to make sure that we all have an opportunity to understand what the truth is, as opposed to just the stories that are out there on the internet. You mean like Ty? Right. Right. Sir. Now you got a problem with the internet, with the blogs, oh. as the housewives say. I'm now so you got a problem sorry. with the blogs. Oh, <laughs> now you have an issue. Oh, because so which ones do you not okay, I can't. They have not right. told the kids yet, which is so sad. Right. So viewer question is if the relationship was all a front for the cameras this whole time. And Drew said, Ralph tries, It's what I found so fascinating is Ralph did try to interject a few times, but she stumped him so much with how she would respond that uh-huh. he wouldn't have anything. It was, right. am- it was incredible. Because she, she, she held her own. It was, it was so like beautiful. when they were in, 
what was it in Portugal? How like Sheree had to like she couldn't do anything but like result to like the petty shit because Drew had her number. She called her out on all the shit that she was doing, but Sheree couldn't have a comeback. She goes, I, 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 doing the stuttering <laughs> shit that she does, and then she has to just like insult her. <laughs> oh my god, this her and Ralph. That whole couch, as a matter of fact, with, uh, with the exception of Sonya. Yeah, I'll Sonya, take Sonya, we're okay. Off. We're okay. Everyone but, else, that mm, whole couch is mm, just get out. And go. Go away. Just. Trash. Okay. Ugh. Mad at all of you. Mad. Can you say, <laughs> how are you listening to Ralph and being like, I, mm-hmm, this is who right. I'm aligned with right now. Right. Are you crazy? Weirdo. So Drew says, as we already know, of course, she kept and protected some things from being on TV for her husband because that's uh-huh. what a good partner does. Exactly. Even though it's also unhealthy that she, he expected her to do that. He expected her to keep maintaining that he is a good guy. Right. And he asked her to get suspicious or specific and Ralph encourages her. And he's like, if there's infidelity, talk about it. Um, what, I don't know what that tactic was. I don't know what that tactic was. Right. But Andy goes, were you faithful to her? And he goes, it would have come out already. Andy goes, that's not the question. Exactly. Were you faithful to her? And his answer is, uh, yes, it would have already come out. I haven't done anything with anyone. It would have already come out. Then Andy asks Drew, and she just says, absolutely. <laughs> I like she. I know she hasn't cheated on that man. Right. I really do not feel in my heart of hearts that she has. I feel like we've no. watched her be so, it's just, she's lost herself completely in the relationship. Yeah. But then Ralph goes, what about Ty? I ca- uh-uh. She goes, are you really going to play story. in my face right now? <laughs> like, are you seriously going to do that? Ralph goes back to like somber, quiet mode. And he goes, first of all, Drew, I don't want to go back and forth with you. I want this to just be an opportunity for us to be able to just talk. Excuse me? How come you couldn't have these conversations at home? Why are you doing this right. on this platform? What the or- fuck are you saying? Here's a wild suggestion. How about you can have these conversations in couples therapy where you fucking were in the first place and you decided not to go anymore? Thank you. So I think we can be immature. We can be mature. Shut up. Oh, Oh, it it can't be me. It can't be me. Like ever. Not a day in my life. It can't be me. And I hate to say that because it makes me feel like bad for Drew, but like it could never be me. My God. Never. But this Ugh. this model, I, I had to write the whole thing down because it was beautiful. It was so it was fabulous. Mm. She says, "You came to me two days ago, apologetic, and now you're playing in my face. You've been playing in my face for three years. Don't do it today. Today is your chance to show up different. You've always mm. chosen other women over me. You've always put me in precarious situations to make me embarrassed. Uh-huh. And I have sat here and I have supported and I have stayed the course with you." And then Ralph goes. Can I answer Andy's question? Someone come yeah. get him. Someone. Please. Get. get And don't let him back in. Don't let him even get his shit out of the dressing room. Just put his ass out, lock the door, and make him walk back to the goddamn hotel. You can't stay here. Sorry. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. He And then his answer is, the truth is, I asked Drew for the divorce. What does that matter? Child. The question was, I, I, were you faithful? <laughs> And I, I, you know what? And I genuinely believe that too. I believe that uh, she said that she was meeting with divorce lawyers. Ralph's person now, we know how a narcissist works. They cannot lose control. So of course, and Drew, I know you're probably going to talk about, but Drew, her response was so perfect because Ralph didn't say his first mind wasn't to fight for his marriage. Mm -mm. It was to beat her to the courthouse. Mm -hmm. That tells you everything you need to know about that man. Everything. Everything. When she says you... I wanted to go back to counseling. You quit Dr. Ken because he was holding you accountable for your inappropriate behavior. So you blocked Dr. Ken. (laughs) Now that's some petty shit. Now that is a like blocked him because he had your number. We get it. Like he had your fucking number. Okay, fine. Then she goes, (laughs) and then you get involved with Mimi to try and create this narrative about me. Why? You think I did that? Ralph says, you think I did that? Drew goes, but you want to protect the kids. Ralph goes, your assistant told me. Now, Drew, of course, says that's a lie. But then other women say that there is that her assistant, Danny, said that to them. But when Candy oh, wow. won't say who told her that he said that to them, I then was like, well, now I don't know if I believe that. Right. Because I feel like 
Courtney or Ralph could have told someone that and then it, you know what I mean like I, I I'm just still not buying right that no. candy Ralph made sure <laughs> she Drew even says Ralph Ralph is the streets this is Ralph is the streets that's why I said it last week when Marlo goes the streets are talking this, I'm like you mean Courtney right no you're making this making it seem like you barely knew this assistant guy uh, before like any of this, but now he's so comfortable. He's coming to you and telling you, "Oh, her entire oh, stop it, stop playing in my face mm. all the time." Mm-mm. Like I'm, you're not smarter than us, Ralph. You might think you are, but you're not. Mm-mm. So Drew busts out her phone and shows and shows Andy uh something, and Ralph goes, "Oh, I love that you did that." Oh, do you? Do you love that she did that? The fuck does that mean? <laughs> and it right. said, Andy. Andy explains it. It's like that's a woman with a sizable ass and <laughs> and it says are you going to bring me back that dick and drew says it's been he's been doing it for years and he just apologized to her for it uh-huh. and now how what a mind fuck to have him right behind closed doors say he's sorry for that and then now they're on this stage in front of all of these people uh-huh. even just the people in the room the crew the whatever that alone is like Crazy Let me tell game. you why this pisses me off so much. And I'm going to shift it a little bit to Sheree. Mm-hmm. I, Kenya showed up the exact way she should. Sheree is so low of a person. Yep. And is so, like, not a girl's girl mm-hmm. that Sheree just got done dealing with Martell. Yep. And we all yep. just applauded her for finally putting herself first and breaking up with him because there was too much stuff. All of this stuff that uh, Ralph is doing, that Drew says Ralph is doing, is classic Martell behavior. Totally. And you're telling me that you're you're sitting there, and even in this moment, <sighs> you can't find it in you to, mm-hmm. like, go up for Drew right now. Mm-hmm. You still got to be on the side of evil. Uh-huh. Like, even now. Mm-hmm. Like, Sheree, really? And the sick thing uh. is, Martell, like, they're, the revenge porn was it? Yes. Like, this man's a bad, bad man. Yes. And you still downplayed it. You still acted mm-hmm. like you just didn't want to be dragged into the mess. You could put yourself first. It's like, you should be denouncing that man. You should be saying he is garbage. He's trash to women. No one should date him. But mm-hmm. I have a feeling that she would still 100% pick up the phone and be with him. I feel like he dumped her. I can believe it. And he always, like, his ex-wife, Melody Holt, mm-hmm. she always says how... um you know, she she show text messages like Martell. Literally, he will come in here. He will clown in front of y'all. He will argue with me because I uh, won't be with him. That I won't get here in the time of day. I ignore him and I don't want him in my space. But then text messages. He will literally text me all day. I just want our family back. We were such a good yes. unit. We were this and that. And does it like as recently as when he was with Sheree? So it's wow. like some somebody's gotta like. Stand yeah, up for themselves. Another thing like, is like when you, if you were to watch Love and Marriage Huntsville in real time, it would not appear that he was with Sheree. Right. That's a big thing I want people to realize. Like that's a whole other show you could witness with your own eyes. Mm-hmm. That it doesn't appear like he has Sheree on his mind as a girlfriend in any capacity. No. So no, no, no. police. All right. Um, Ralph starts talking and Andy asks, well, then what was that photo? And Ralph laughs. Classic sign of someone lying. He goes, it's a catfish. And I'm like, ooh, that you just totally gave, that's a tell. It's such a tell mm-hmm. that you did that. There's nothing that says I responded with her. And she also texts the same photo to Drew. You're not showing Andy everything. So Drew's just shows Kent. He's like, she's like, what about this one? Like, I got another text. I have right. countless <laughs> women texting my fucking phone. Mm-hmm. But then she puts her phone away. She goes, I'll let you have your moment. And Ralph is talking and talking, saying stuff like, you can't do that. That's damaging. What you're doing is damaging. <laughs> Drew goes, what about the woman whose house you were going over to? <gasps> details. All right. Give me the details. He doesn't say a word about that. He, doesn't, he just goes, <laughs> he just like stares at her. He's like, mm. <laughs> but then Andy goes, what happened in Vegas? Ralph smiles again. Uh-huh. That's a great question. I was at a work event. His smile is so creepy. I was I at a work event. Andy goes, it's the Chocolate City Magic Mike thing. And he goes, oh, no, Drew made that up. Thank God Candy called and talked to the producer of the show on mm-hmm. camera. You're right. Right. So, Ralph, you just lied. 
And now mm-hmm. you're going to go into some bullshit explanation. I was already there for work. Some IT infrastructure operations and cloud strategies conference. <laughs> <laughs> but he was also there for the Magic Mike thing. So it, he goes, it wasn't some big secret that I was going there. And even Andy is like, she never said it was a secret. She told right. them you went to Vegas. Said it on camera to the entire group. Like, what, what What was secret about it? What That's why mean? I liked Andy in these moments. He was, he had her back and I was very uh-huh. grateful because sometimes yes. he doesn't come through like that. And yeah. Drew's easy to fuck with, you know, because Drew lies right. all the time. <laughs> but she was so clear. She was. She gives another great monologue about how her, her insecurities have come out because of this man putting her in situations where she's always questioning. She says uh-huh. to the women, some of you know what it's like to be embarrassed and have women coming up to you and telling you things. Your husband leaves and you don't know where he's going. We try to talk about it in counseling. He leaves counseling. He feels like he doesn't owe me an explanation. He moves out of the bedroom. And I'm supposed to just sit there and do what? When is enough enough? And then you sit here and send whack ass messages to Sheree's front door and you act like you have nothing to do with it. And what does Ralph do? He goes, What? What are you what are you talking about? And then he goes, Can Girl. I see can I see them? And the way he's like, Oh, these, these things I've never this I've never <laughs> seen before in my life. Courtney seemed to know what they were. Mm-hmm. Courtney wasn't shocked by those mess. She was like, mm-hmm. Like she didn't even need to look at them. Oh, she knows. Him and Ralph. Now, I don't know which one of them like physically walked over to Sheree's house and dropped them off. But it Maybe came that, from I think him. they sent someone else. I think they're like, th- th- she may have cameras. Maybe, yeah. You know, we don't want to risk it. So mm-hmm. we'll send some lackey. But I also, I don't think it was like as ominous as Sheree is making it out to be. I think Sheree asked, like, talk to the person that did it. It was, I, I think uh-huh. it was one of them. And one of them dropped it off. Maybe Courtney, because Courtney has a better relationship with her uh-huh. than Ralph does. Uh-huh. But I feel like he dropped it off and they're trying to make it seem like, well, I don't know. It was just, the, or maybe me, me. I don't who, know. <laughs> who the fuck would go to Sheree's with a manila envelope of DMs with no explanation? Exactly. It's not that Girl. serious. These were dropped no. off at my house with no note, no nothing. Bullshit. Right. Bullshit. Because first of all, Sheree, you wouldn't have opened it because you would have thought it was a subpoena to appear in court <laughs> like you were getting sued for some damn bill collector. So you wouldn't have opened the damn manila fold in the first place. Let's that be very She would have launched an internal investigation into every single person on the crew. She would have been mm-hmm. trying to figure out who sent that if it was anything other than the... No. No. Exactly. No. And then Ralph has the audacity to say, the streets have been telling me things about you and Ty. Uh, But then I love Drew goes, you just told me you were getting blowjobs around the world. And Ralph's (laughs) explanation for that is that's just, you see how silly that sounds? It sounds silly. (sighs) But she goes, that's what you said to me. And he goes, because it's silly to say. It just sounds silly, you know? And then Andy's like, but did you say it, though? It was just silly. It was just something. It was silly. It wasn't even believable. And Andy goes, it's not. But Ralph (laughs) Ralph stares at me. I got scared. He was like, like, he's like, oh, you haven't seen my nasty side. And I will bring his slip showed right there. The true Uh Ralph, that face. I was like, oh, huh. Can't come out here and take it. Can you? Right. And then his answer Uh is, I haven't even been around the world to go to. (laughs) We figured maybe you not, didn't but you've been all over. Literally, yeah, mean yeah, yeah. okay, like right. shut the hell up. You've and been he all goes, over the U.S., motherfucker. Your cousin Courtney made some wild allegations about why Drew wanted you to adopt Josiah. Uh, now this part was nasty, right? He says there's only three reasons to adopt: right, abuse, abandonment, and death. Those are the only quote reasons you should be adopting. JoJo's dad wants to be his dad. He shows up. Drew talks to him on a regular basis. I would never take that away from a man, from a black man. That's a very hasty decision. That is so shitty to say. Manipulative. Wow. That's fucked up. And the fact that Kenya just talked about adopting, uh, I don't think she fits into any of those fucking three categories, dumbass. Like, what are we doing? It's like, no, you had been JoJo's dad that whole time. She was married to you. Uh And and all that time, the father wasn't showing up. This is very recent that he was. Are you kidding me? And you you clearly told Josiah you would adopt him. 
Uh-huh. And now you're not. Uh-huh. So, uh-uh. No, mm-mm, not, not fucking happening. Just traumatizing mm-hmm. for Drew and for Josiah. Uh-huh. And I don't know why the hell Andy asks here. He goes, do you two hope for a reconciliation? Do, do, do not encourage that. Please, sir. Don't. Do be better. Do better for yourself. Oh, God. Run. Run full speed away. Yes. We all, you know, I was about to make a bad joke. <laughs> You're going to say she can't run? I forget. No. <laughs> I was not going to say that. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to say. I was going to say, I completely forgot LeBron James was married. I'm about to go, go get you an athlete. LeBron James wanted you at once upon a time. So I thought they would get together. But then I was like, oh, shit, Savannah. He's got a whole wife and kids. So, no, don't be a home record, Drew. Get you get you a, a good single athlete. There are a lot yes, out here. Yes, yes. Because, Drew, yeah. you're so hot. You're so gorgeous. And mm-hmm. you would be even hotter and more gorgeous when you drop this asshole. Mm-hmm. Trust. Actually, you know what? Not now. Get you somebody behind the scenes. Someone in entertainment, like mm-hmm. entertainment law. Or like an entertainment, entertainment lawyer or a yeah, doctor. Agent or, yeah. You know, like a sports doctor or something. Mm-hmm. But a yeah, PT, someone supportive. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. And she, th- this is where Drew's therapy, though, just came. It was so amazing. Andy asks if they have love for each other. And, of course, they're both like, yes, I love my wife. I love my husband. Oh. But Drew says, he does not provide me a safe space to share my feelings. He always says, mm-hmm. fuck your feelings. That's your favorite line. Fuck your feelings. Mm-hmm. I can just hear him. I can just hear him saying it. Right. When Drew said this, I felt it deeply. Because I was in a long-term relationship that I wish I could. You don't get the time back, guys. Nope. It's gone forever. She goes, I have literally given you all of my 30s. Oh. I felt that so deeply. I know. I know. Oh, and you've broken my heart year after year. You never, I, I'm sorry, I, I keep writing all of her monologues out because they're just so good. They were. Oh. She ate. Oh she my ate. God. You never acknowledge my feelings. You never do right by me. You've disrespected my mother. You've talked about my dad. You banned my sister. You isolated me. You did not claim JoJo on your petition. You constantly ice me out. You constantly throw dirt on my name and think it's a joke. You think it's a game. And then you go and coach your cousin, Courtney. Why would you coach somebody you just met to go against your own wife on this show? Ugh! Brava. So? Brava. But why the fuck are, at one point, Sheree and Marlo are like kind of giggling to each other during that. And I'm like... Share with the Two class. broke ass dweebs, right? <laughs> what? Just, I'm so- <laughs> what is funny God. about this right now? How are you looking at Drew being like, ha ha, like, no. Right. No. And let me, t- let me, I hate to like go to this like dark of a place, but this is why this, anno- I, uh, Sheree and Marlo have really like mm-hmm. torn their drawers with me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, y'all better go get some new panties because you can tow your drawers <laughs> with me. You can't come back over here. The reason why they, annoyed me so much at this reunion. <laughs> Think about Sheree's past, specifically Sheree, on this show. What season was that? Season nine? You were in a van with Bob Whitfield Ugh. talking about your past, and that man joked about how he should have hit you harder. We're li- Literally, you're struggling with a man that wouldn't come and see you when he got time. A man mm-hmm. that was in the confines of jail all this time and didn't want to even leave the halfway house to come and see you uh-huh. and you were embarrassed on camera. Uh-huh. You can sit up and do... You can remember all of these relationships, but you can't have sympathy for Drew in this moment. You got to make it laugh. I, I, There is something about a person uh-uh. who can't get over their own shit enough mm-hmm. to support the next person mm-hmm. that's going through shit that they've already been through. Mm-hmm. Sheree is weird as hell to me now. <laughs> and I don't, I, I just don't, her and Marlo have now just like, get them away from me. Like they annoy me so much now. I'm just like, y'all can't even be just like uh-uh. decent people in like any regard. Same, same, same. Ugh. This, this, this was such a bad look for them. And here mm-hmm. they are thinking they're going to, the, everyone's on our side because we're the underdogs. No, mm-mm, not no. happening. But that like, their little giggling, I think that gave Ralph a little power because that's when he goes, Drew, you're acting right now. Oh, I was so, I, I don't blame her for walking. I don't know how she stayed as long as she did because right. go fuck yourself. Go, right. oh my God, you nasty, awful human being. And then Marlo mm. goes, Drew, come back. You left your purse. <laughs> Now, that did make me laugh. I'm no. sorry. I did laugh at that. <laughs> um, but 
Allison, Jesus. when she's Allison's helping Drew like in the dressing room, calm down, and she goes, uh-huh. "You need to bring up the PI." And she says, uh, no, there are some things I don't want to be aired on television. I'm like, yeah, save it for court. Take his ass down. Mm-hmm. I want to know. I See, I feel like this is some stuff that like she feels like she would be uber embarrassed about. And that's why she don't want to bring it up. Oh, of course. So I'm like, oh, what could it be? Like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to. Mm, I see what you're Ralph, saying. You've been doing some things. I want to. And I want to know every one of them. So me Drew, too. Let the chopper sing. I want to know me all too. of it. Oof. So while she's there. Ralph is like, I've supported her for a very long time. I mean, always uplift her, always supporting. I thank God Andy goes, I don't know if that always reads on camera. And then he goes, well, and that's the problem. What? You did it. What do you mean? (laughs) What's the problem, sir? That doesn't even make sense. Kenya steps up. Up, yes. up, up here. She brings up how he's like, but the whole thing with Courtney and like, you're like, everyone calls you a bitch. And Andy adds on or making Ike and Tina jokes. And he, his, Ralph at that point, you can tell he's like, oh, I'm going to kill both of you. Like, I actually right. will stab you right now. <laughs> and Kenya goes, what a wife really wants to hear. And then Marlo starts in. Yeah, I told you that. I told you. I said, look, I hope you guys get back together. And why is Candy agreeing with that? Why is Candy like, mm hmm? Like, no. 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 Even me, you know me, I'm all about a black home staying together, but like, no, no. I never support that shit. If if y'all are toxic with each other, Mm -hmm. get the hell away from each other. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Ralph, maybe you can go and learn and be a better man and be a better husband for somebody else. You can't be it for Drew. Let Mm -hmm. that lady go. Go live your life, Drew. Your acting career is back on on the come up. Tamar Braxton posted, she saw the reunion. She's heard Drew oh, really? sing. She's like, I want her to open up for me on my <gasps> new tour. Like, all of this. Like, yes. Drew, you've got these opportunities. Candace so is not- going to keep bringing Drew a lot. Like, mm-hmm. you're going to be surrounded by support now. Yes. If she was, Drew, if you were smart, you would let, like, all the shit with Candy go. You would yeah. feel like, yeah. I'm sorry she to say, like, to. I hate saying this, but, like. You should kiss the ring mm-hmm. really good and ask her to produce an album for you. And she because one 100%. thing Candy can do is fucking write some good music. Hundred, let her do it. Hundred percent agree with you. Mm. So, but Kenya, she's just she lets Ralph know that it is. She's so calm. She doesn't say. She compares mm-hmm. him to Mark and the way Mark handled it when she said that the women were talking about her. She says you side with her enemies. She says, uh-huh. Courtney had all this ammunition that she could have only gotten from you. Uh-huh. So as I love, though, as Drew's coming out, she gets to hear the end of this. So I'm happy that she knows someone had her back right. on that stage. Uh-huh. And Ralph goes, and how long were you married? And I was like, uh-oh, how's this going to go? Kenya just goes, does that matter to you? And he right. says, that changes things. And she says, how? So now you're going to discount my feelings because it's not been as long as yours? <laughs> oh, what do you got now? What I would exactly because what I would have I would have hated to hurt Drew's feelings in that moment, but I would have said you're mad at me because I realized Mark was Mark uh, a lot sooner than Drew realized that Ralph was Ralph, uh-huh. and uh-huh. I got the fuck out of that situation. Uh-huh. Like Ralph, go, mm, eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> like get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so we are not having oh, it. Andy no. Andy cuts them off and asks if there's anything else they want to say to each other, and of course ralph takes the opportunity to pull that i just want to see you happy bullshit (sighs) andy asks about drew's new song and it was something she wrote when they were going through their issues and he goes okay we're gonna reset uh and so they like while that happens andy walks over andy walks over to to candy and in kenya which i thought was kind of cute uh but then this fucker walks over to drew like get out of here he goes you okay drew Uh, that doesn't even make sense coming out you know what though I, I don't know why i'm just like connecting these dots she really has like his bad habits have really like rubbed off on her in like a lot of regards because yeah. her and candy in the last reunion went back and forth and like she was like hurling some wild accusations at candy and then she goes i just want to make sure we're good it's like no we're not good <laughs> so like i feel like her way of like yeah not necessarily communicating but yeah. like 
her way of like sweeping stuff under the rug. Yeah. I feel like she got that from her relationship with Ralph. And yep. now like that's another behavior she's gonna have to unlearn when oh, she finally yeah. dumps his ass in the trash can. Totally agree with you. One hundred percent agree with that. Um now, for the record, Ralph did not need to be on this stage for the song. <laughs> He could have been, thank you, Ralph. Thank you for your time. When we come back, Drew is going to sing a song. Yeah. Bye-bye, Ralph. Nope. Ralph was <laughs> there. <laughs> the co- Okay. Drew has a voice on her. It's so stunning. Yes. It's so amazing. Mm-hmm. What did you call the song? What did you compare it to? On, what was the, the name, the title oh, of your a, episode? Oh, Keisha Cole. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> She serenaded Ralph with a Keisha Cole song. <laughs> spot on. So spot on. It's what it gave. It's what it gave. Um, now look, was it cringe as hell in that, sh- that little tiny space to be like right next to her singing it to him? Right. Yes. But I also loved it. I was also like, you tell him. You mm-hmm. tell him. Tell him right now. Sing it to his face. Oh, my God. And he's like, I have never been more uncomfortable. Like, when it's, right. done, when it's done, they're like, okay, bye, Ralph. And he's like, all right. right. I've seen a lot of awkward things at a reunion. Oh. Um, singing the breakup song to Ralph, is uh, it's up there. And Wild. I was like, give true credit, Andy. You should have been like, well done. I can't believe you. She was crying as she started it. Like she had to like, mm-hmm. I mean, what a professional. They put her right? ass in that situation. She said, all right, if you're going to fucking make me do this, I guess I'll do it. And she did she it. She sounded good. She sounded amazing. So yes. why now, the don't hell get did me wrong. I laughed cheers? throughout the whole thing. But. I did too. No, I did too. I absolutely. But she sounded great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was really oh. surprised she sounded so good. Yeah. And I, Sheree giving that to he hold on hold the fuck on because Andy referred Uh-oh. to her as something where during this this oh he called her the resident peacemaker of the group what I said who wait wait who you said Sheree <laughs> the no. resident pe no 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 sir Mm-mm. sorry no sir y'all aren't y'all aren't doing this to me today no. not today <laughs> no. <laughs> Nope. I will not tolerate it. Uh-uh. <sighs> All right. I'm really glad we got to talk that out because that was a lot. I know. It was like, I, oh my God. It was. So if that doesn't make you want Drew back for another season, I don't know what you do. Like, right? I need to see this. I need Give to see the Give me the left couch get rid of everybody else. Bring yeah, I need Portia. to see the journey. <laughs> get ba- Bring back Portia. Get rid of uh-huh. the other people. Use that money to get Portia. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm because honestly, we could have a very small cast, and it yep. would still be good. Candy, Kenya, Portia, Drew, and then mm-hmm. I don't know S- Sonya. I, I don't really know if I need Sonya. Friend, uh, yeah, friend of maybe. Sure. I don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Monetta. Was Monetta full time? She can be a friend of. No friend of. Okay, yeah, she can stay there. Yeah, she can stay I'm there. Cool with yeah. it. But no, we and need. Then, like um, with those four, give us. If, if any, if worst case scenario, give us two new housewives. Yeah, two people we've never met. They mm-hmm. got to end with the group. They can yep. give us some dynamo. I think I tell y'all, my favorite kind of housewife is a uh, a Monica from Salt Lake mm-hmm. City. Not not necessarily her, but like that type and a Jen Aiden. The ones that come in and have absolutely nothing to lose, but are like. It's better when it's a Jen Aiden because Jen Aiden has like the money to back it up, like not having anything to lose. Yep. And can just like brag about her crap. But like that's the best kind of housewife. One that's not famous. Atlanta, that's what that's what's gonna be a slippery slope with Atlanta. Because if you're gonna go the famous route, because a lot of famous people live in Atlanta, you really have to do it right. I've heard oh, oh, oh. Hold on before we end this conversation, because mm-hmm. it's the last time we'll talk about Atlanta for a year. Uh, we've heard some names get thrown out there. That reportedly production is thrown out there. Celebrities. One, there. I don't know if I believe this at all, but they're saying that Mariah Huck is being considered. I've been saying mm. this for years that she needs to be on this show. So if that actually did happen, if I, it happens, I great. Doubt, I just doubt it. I don't see it happening. They have Me such neither. a bad relationship with her still, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't see it happening. If it did, I would be on cloud fucking nine. Give me Mariah back. Mm-hmm. They throw, they, they've they been saying uh, Tamar would uh, it's been like been on their heavy consideration. I mean, like, I mean, give she's it. a reality TV goat, so yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know her, but uh, Keisha Kaor, who I love, 
she's been considered that's Gucci Man's wife. Gucci Man's wife. Okay. And so she had her own reality show. Like her what? Her wedding was produced by Carlos King. Oh, it was an well, immaculate event. Beautiful. Yes. And she's friend. This is the most rant of all the people on the cast that she could be friends with. She's friend with Kim Beerman. Kim oh. Zosiak. I mean, yeah. Huh. Really weird. Yeah. And then there said some uh, a popular realtor in uh, Atlanta called Kiana Watson. I've never heard of her, but I'm here for it. Okay, good. Wait, you, you yeah. I forgot to re- remind you about something with Heather that you wanted to talk about with Atlanta. Oh, we we kind of skipped over that. Well, you know, we kind of briefly talked about Candy and the uh they had they were talking about she needs to take time down and oh, yeah. all this stuff. I need people to keep the exact same energy that they have with Candy with Heather because in my mind they do the exact same like if you're so mad about Candy's like businesses being shown on the show, then stop Heather from doing the shit too. Like every other episode is Heather you mean, promoting like something or yeah, like mm-hmm. I feel like the people, like the big criticism that she gets is, oh well, she's just on here to promote her businesses and all that. That shouldn't be allowed if you're a housewife and all that stuff. I'm like, I can look at every other city and tell you where these other women are that are doing the exact same thing. So like, if you got a problem with it, you need to have a problem with it across the goddamn board. So like that excuse where it's staying with me, uh, especially after these rad, this like recent episodes of OC, it's all been like, oh, I just sold my home for extreme her. profit. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, HD, 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 Mark Cuban. And I'm like, okay, like if y'all gonna be mad about it with Candy, be mad about it with every other franchise and all these other housewives doing it. Like, no, stop it. I, I, okay. I said this on the OC recap, but. I got an email months ago from, it looked like just a bad marketing email from Me too. Fireside, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. it looked so like, I saw Mark Cuban attached, but it, like the way the the way it was laid out, I was like, this just looks like spam. Like I just right. don't even buy it. And so I'm almost like, I think Mark Cuban's doing this specifically to take a loss because <laughs> it's good for like billionaires to do that. <laughs> and so I feel like this is not, he has no intention of making this a real thing. He's like, like, no. I need to put my money somewhere so I can right. like, not have to claim all of it on my taxes. I'd rather mm-hmm. spend it. Maybe Heather can do something with it, but he's like, no, she won't. It's fine. Like, right. What even is it? So I yeah. said the same thing. I got the email and I was like, this is absolutely spam. I'm yeah. not I'm not clicking on anything in this email. And then I I'm remember when I when I her. when I looked, I Googled then Fireside and was confused as to what it was. Like the explanation. Mm-hmm. I was like, so it's a uh, Pl- like a social media platform right it was it no wasn't idea. it was not understandable so no. it's a little project for heather but that's about it yeah. that's about that <sighs> all right well, that was a good one this was a good yeah. one goodbye Atlanta. thank you thank you thank you kendrick as always for the thank amazing for coverage me. yes indeed it's always sad when we end the season but we have I roni know. still so it's kind of it's it's a little we easier do. to transition look in this the time. Yeah, i think you're right i'll look and see episode. we may okay. not have one next week um okay. but i may want to talk about something else with you so Okay, because I'm actually the following day that, you know, we record on, y'all don't know, we record on Mondays, usually. Usually. We both have stuff that come up, we <laughs> like, child, like, give me tomorrow. <laughs> but, like, I'm actually out of town to, for the queen. I go out of town next Friday, right. and then I come back later in the, like, the other week, so. Okay. But, if, but we can still, if we if Roni comes on, we can yeah. still talk, if, like, later in the week or yeah. something. no problem. It's okay. Okay, we'll okay. okay. We'll Guys, don't out. forget, follow Kendrick at Reality Comics 2, and then make sure you're checking out his podcast i am gonna link uh his most recent episode in this description because i think you guys should go check that out um love you guys mean it and see you soon bye oh i know it's always so sad (laughs) thank you so much for watching and for listening to she speaks bravo with emily hanks if you haven't already would you mind leaving a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you listen that would be amazing and if you're watching on youtube make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell so you don't miss an episode and if you're looking for more content more exclusive bonus content check out the patreon i post two exclusive episodes a month and i'm covering just the Bravo jams like classic Roni, Atlanta, and of course Vanderpump Rules. If you just want to support the show, head to buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo and buy me a coffee or two or five. We also have merch available at she speaks bravo.com. And if you're interested in hearing my takes on non-Bravo shows, check out my new podcast, She Speaks It All. A 
I cover the challenge, drag race, and any other show I'm obsessed with that's not Bravo. She Speaks It All is available everywhere you get your podcasts, just like this show. Make sure you're following me on the social medias. I am She Speaks Bravo across all platforms. Thank you so much for any support you give the show, even if it's just listening. Appreciate you. Love you. Mean it. I'll see you soon.